Listen closely as you hear the death of all your brain cells. <laughs> It's an oldie where I've come from. It's Tuesday night. Time once again for another Indie 180. 180 minutes of music, news, and interviews. Brought to you in part by Cold Cock Whiskey and Below Pace. Syndicated on Bull Spike Radio. Sundays, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. With your hosts, the Nom Nuts. Some slut named some dude. And me, Nah. So buckle in and get ready. Because the show begins now. Indy 180. All right, guys, uh, listen to some blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 sir. Another Indy 180. 180 minutes of music, news, and interviews right here on official F. And radio.com, that's OFNR for short. Not OFNR radio, OFNR. Because if you do OFNR radio, it's just redundant. It's like ATM machine. I know we all say ATM machine, but really, we don't need the machine after ATM because ATM stands for automatic teller machine. So it's like saying automatic teller machine machine or OFNR radio radio. My name, of course, is Knob. On the Skype line, you expect Nom Nuts, but Nom Nuts is not here tonight. He's not coming today. He took the night off. I don't know why. Now I'm nuts. So instead, it is my fucking pl- privilege and honor, as always, to have my good dear friend and brother from another mother on the line, on the Skype, Mr. Turbo, co-host of Bull Spike Radio, host of The Asylum, or co-owner of Bull Spike Radio, sorry. And, of course, host of the Asylum that you can hear every Wednesday tomorrow included at 1 p.m. right here on OFNR. You got Don Jameson on this week, right? Yeah, I do, man. Yeah, fucking crazy. My good guys. buddy Don, Don Jameson's got a new comedy album out, Communication Breakdown. Uh, Metal Blade Records came out Friday this past, Friday, April 21st, out now wherever you buy your music and... I hear more on to talk about that and just some music in general. The usual good stuff. Good. Couple laughs cool. between him and I, as always. I'll tell you, man, you always have awesome guests on your show, man, and uh, I'm so happy to have it here on OFNR. Uh, we're going to talk real quick. You know, uh, obviously, tonight is a special night for OFNR and why I have Turbo on. Uh, we're going to do a state of the music industry round table. And uh, what that means is, you know, I've collected a few folks, and Turbo included, uh, to talk about the music industry and the past. You know, we're going to look at the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s. And then we're going to look at the destruction of the industry, which happened around 2000. And then we're going to talk about today. And we're going to hopefully, at some point this evening, talk about tomorrow. Uh, in the sense that uh, the music industry has changed uh, exceptionally, and I don't think for the better. I think for the worse. Um, We're going to talk about all that, and we've got some really great special guests. I've got Jason Lechberg of Ikelia, who is actually in the industry. He is an actual industry insider, and he's going to give us some really, really all... I've been fucking, dude, I've been killing for this one for a long time to get Jason on and talk to us about the industry because I've had, you know, conversations with Jason about I kill you a hundred thousand million times. And we've talked about that. But I know that that dude's got some serious uh, information that he could share with us and uh, and lead us to some, you know, concepts that maybe we didn't think of before. So we got him. And then I've got Scotty Anarchy from Crossing Rubicon, our own Connecticut's own Crossing Rubicon. He's got some pretty cool stories about bands that are lip syncing or playing the tracks and stuff like that. And I think that's vital to this conversation as well. Of course, uh, some dude's on his way. He should be here in just a little bit. Bart Graham might show up. Aaron from She Walks Without Legs might show up. But if not, hey, we've got ourselves. Right, Turbo? Exactly. (laughs) At the very least, there's two of us here. 
to rant and rave like lunatics about the current state of the music industry and Absolutely. Or whatever it is you want to call it. Absolutely. And I think also, you know, we collectively, you and I, can really discuss the the radio end of things because I think we're getting hosed, bro. I think you and I are getting totally fucking hosed on a regular basis because I know from personal experience for both of us, our rates have tripled and the big guys have not experienced this rate hike to the extent that we have where it's actually crippled. No offense. Crippled the industry. No, it's it. <laughs> you know, and I, 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 I real quick, I do want to say, I call shenanigans on this whole crippled thing, Turbo. I don't, I don't think you know. Somebody says, "Oh, he's crippled." He is. That motherfucker goes. You go to more shows than I'll ever go to in my lifetime. Yeah, I call shenanigans. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is not right. I've said this for a couple weeks now. I don't, I'll tell you, man. I don't think I don't, when I when I see disabled, that's you are not the first person that comes to mind. I'll tell you what. Well, listen, you put a flight upstairs in front of me and suddenly <laughs> you see what my my kryptonite becomes. Yeah, no you shit, know. huh, right? Yeah, I hear that. That's for sure. No, 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 no matter uh, what band or what hot female may be at the other end of those stairs, you put stairs between me and anything I may be into and it ain't gonna matter. You don't found my kryptonite. Yeah, for sure, man. I heard that. I heard that. So anyway, uh, real quick, let me run through some of the things that are coming up here for OFNR and stuff that we're going to be at and around and about and all that fun stuff. For the end of April here, the 29th of April, Nasty Disasters, 20th anniversary, Herman Von Roll's last stand. It's Herman Von Roll's last time playing with Nasty Disasters. These guys are celebrating 20 years in the business. Now, before there was Steel Panther, I'm going to say this. Before there was Steel Panther, there was fucking Nasty Disaster. Those guys ripped off Nasty D 110%. There's no question in my mind. Those guys were doing it way longer before fucking Steel Panther ever made it. And unfortunately, Steel Panther made it and Nasty D is still a local independent band. It's going to be a great night. You got Garbage Barge, you got Nasty Disaster, and of course you got Eyes of the Dead, which I always give shit to. Just because... That's just sort of the relationship that we have. So I will say there's two good bands and one not so great band. But at least Frank's not going to be there. He's not singing. They're going to have a bunch of guest singers. It's going to be much better. <laughs> and I say that with peace and love in my heart because I do actually like that. Uh, the Eyes of the Dead guys. They're good dudes. I just love giving them shit. It's just the way it works. Now in May, we move into May, we've got Left Hand Backwards coming into the studio, returning to the OFNR studios to come hang out with us and talk shop and talk about the band and some shows. They're playing with Green Jelly coming up in the near future. It's going to be a great show. You're going to want to check that out. You're going to want to check all that out. On the 7th of May, we're doing another Jeopardy. A couple Last year, we had uh, the League of Extraordinary Frontman, which is a great podcast. You guys should check it out. It's a bunch of nerds hanging out, talking about nerdy stuff. And uh, last year, we did the Nerd Jeopardy. And Scotty Anarchy of Crossing Rubicon is the winner. And uh, this time around, we're doing, on the 7th of May, we're doing Star Wars Jeopardy. Three rounds of Star Wars Jeopardy, full boards, three rounds. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be all kinds of fun shit. It's going to be a good fucking time. So you're going to want to check that out. Star Wars Jeopardy on the 7th. You can hear that live right here on Off and R, Or you can catch a, the podcast, of course, on Metal Syndicate. And then on the 9th of May, we've got Angel Manuel Lopez of the Biting Saints. He's going to be calling in, talking about his uh, graphic design work, and of course, you know, we'll talk about music and stuff like that. Um, and I'm really excited. I haven't talked to Angel in quite some time. Got a bunch of openings in May, so keep a lock for that. On the 3rd of June, we'll be in Bacon Fest at Cherry Street Station. We'll be broadcasting live for that. And then this just in, from uh, the 2nd of July to the 9th of July, I'm on vacation. Fuck you guys. I'm not going to be here. We're doing Rewind Week. I'm off that week from work, so I'm taking the week off from OFNR as well, and we're going to do... You lazy fucker. <laughs> That's real nice of you, Turpa. Real nice of you to say. Uh, so now I've... Hey, I've, hey, I got, a, I got a, a disability and all that jazz. I got asthma. Man, the only time I don't do a 
uh, I show is if I can't get out of bed. And even if I can't, I usually have it ready to go beforehand so I can at least throw something together for I, a new show. I call shenanigans. I call shenanigans on the disabled shit. I don't, I, I'm, telling, I'm telling you again. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I have been joined inside my studio here, Turbo, by my co-host, Mr. Some Dude. I'm a co-host. And uh, our co-host for the evening, Mr. Bart Graham. That's not even that. That's not even the right mic. Hello. There it is. Yeah. Nope. There it is. Nope. Is it? Huh? One of them Ooh, is. Can I hear you? Oh yeah, lovely. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what number mic is that? Oh yeah. Uh, six. Six. Yeah, that's a good number. But that might I be like, like sixes. Mexican for two or something. All know. right. So speak into that mic again. That's yeah, not six. It's oh. It's 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 that one. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's seven. That's weird. I'm gonna fix that. Well, it says six, and I'll take six. That's fine. No big deal. Mister Turbo, I've met you before. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, you've met some dude before for sure. You've seen you've seen Turbo at fucking shows in New York for sure. Yeah. Since I, I don't, I don't, Absolutely. I don't recall ever actually talking to you on the radio before. Probably not. I don't know. If, no, I don't no, think. I don't think Turbo would. would not. I don't think Turbo would fit very well in the chaos world. <laughs> so some dude has. Some dude used to do a show here. He's he's now since joined Indy One Eighty, but he used to do a show called Chaos, and it, it's pretty awful. Some of the things that he's done on my airwaves, and hmm. I mean, we've done some really awful things together for sure. It was a shit lot of fun, and we've had a shit lot of fun for sure. <laughs> He actually took a quite a quite an extensive time off and came back and was like, "Dude, I need to do something with my life." And I was like, "Well, come do Indie One Eighty." He's like, "Yeah, but you guys don't play good shit. You only play fucking independent music. Huh? <laughs> can't play surfacing. Can't play fucking twisted. Can't play another shit I want to hear." And then you know, yeah, now he's all twitchy. Yeah, now he's all twitchy and shit. Now he, <laughs> he's like calling for battle. He's like, "Dude, I want to mm-hmm. do fucking brutal fucking shit. Wants to be racist for no reason." Just to be racist, you know. That's just the way some do. That's is. a perfectly good reason to be racist. Though. That's true. Yeah, man. Hey, it's all we got. It's all we got. Ring president. <laughs> <laughs> Very fucking <laughs> true. So there you go. Those are some things that are coming up here at O F N R. And of course, if you're in a band, know a band, know of a band. If you're a booking agent or a promoter, or if you just want to chat, our uh, you know our process is pretty simple. Send me an email. Or drop me a line on Facebook or Twitter, and let me know you want to be on the air, and we'll set up a date and get you on. You know, I'm still looking for the first band of 2017 to come in and do an acoustic set here at Ophanar. We had some really amazing acoustic mm. sets last year from some amazing artists. It would be really great to have a few more, maybe that we could add to our collection of awesome, awesome acoustic music that we've done here at Ophanar. I would do acoustic, but it'd probably be all covers. I'd be all right. I'd be cool with that. I don't give a fuck. I ain't, I ain't got no. I got no qualms. I'll uh. I'll strum a few chords and practice a few things like that. And Bob, you get away with it because there's a loophole in royalties that when you're doing covers, if they're being done live, you don't have to cover the royalties on a broadcast. All right, so I got a question. I've actually yeah, got a yeah. question. I've actually got a question for you, Turbo, because you are the perfect person to ask. Because I know these two bozos ain't gonna tell me. <laughs> I've been debating. For quite some time now, because I'm in a financial pickle, as I'm sure we all are in America. True story. Where you know as well as I know, man, we are, you and I are paying an exorbitant amount of money to royalties. Uh, And I do mean an exorbitant Mm -hmm. amount of royalties. I mean, it's, you know, for the amount of listeners I have, I should not be paying what I'm paying, but I am. Now, same here. My wife and I had this discussion recently. She says to me, what would happen if you went all independent? I said, well, first of all, I wouldn't have to pay royalties anymore. And fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) Basically, I would not have to pay royalties anymore because I can get any one of the bands that I play to give me a letter that says, yeah, sure, you can play this shit. Every one of the bands that we play that are independent from across the globe, all the way to fucking Finland and Sweden and Holland and all those bands, they're cool with me playing their music. I mean, they sent you the shit and told you to play it. That's right. Exactly. So I can save myself $60 a month by switching to all independent. It's a really honest to God. I'm having this this dilemma in my in my mind. I mean, sixty dollars is not a lot. That's the bare minimum. I do might want to add. 
if I get more listeners, I pay 75, 80 bucks. I have done that in the last couple months. I've been paying a lot more um, because we've been doing really well in the ratings, which is good and yet bad at the same time because it's hurting my pocket. Mm. I know some dude's going to immediately veto it because he wants to hear surfacing and Twisted and fucking Cypress and all this shit. What do you think about this, Turbo? What, what's your opinion? Well, you know, when the whole thing hit the fan at the end of 2015, where Live 365 decided they were shutting down yeah, go belly without up. giving everyone a fair warning. Yeah. Uh, the idea did cross my mind and my brother's mind of going all independent, but the problem I find now is not everyone out there is interested in independent music and not all independent music. While everyone does have the technology at their fingertips, is recorded with good quality. Well, see, I first of all, I have a I have a quality assurance thing for sure because I do currently, as it stands, play independent music right next door to signed bands. Now, uh, here, as, here's as what, I, of course, and, and as does uh, both like radio, of course. So my dilemma here is really one of financial means. I, I don't have the ability nor the desire to go and get advertisers. That's just not going to ever happen here at OFNR. Yeah, that's that's just not... I don't want to do real commercials. That's just it's not going to happen. Well, and, and, and let's be honest. <laughs> thanks to the king of all media, Howard Stern, and several others out there, you can't sell a business on buying advertising time on internet radio even because though the industry, the industry goes, they don't matter. Yeah, even though all the when, all the reports I've been getting from Rain over the last month have shown a d- dramatic increase in internet radio revenue, I just don't want to go that route. For me, right. I've been doing this eleven years, and I'll be I'll be brutally brutally honest. The only only reason underscored, highlighted, fucking bold, only reason that I do OFNR is to support my independent music comrades here in Connecticut and abroad and across the seas and everywhere else. It's the only reason that OFNR exists is to help support independent music. Now, currently, as it stands, I have over 16 days straight of independent music if I didn't play the same track twice. Over 16 days. (laughs) That's so, a lot of music. Well, I mean, it's, I've been yeah. doing this almost uh, almost eleven years this year, Turbo. That's a lot of lot of time collecting oh, yeah. all this, and I and I've got in my inbox right now six brand new artists, brand new. We're not going to talk about those tonight. We did some music review last week. We do it all right on the air. I I'm like not, doing that. Fuck that game's a lot of fun. Yeah, we <laughs> we we uh, want to get in on that. We uh, yeah. we review music live right here, right on the air, because I am not. I am very transparent in everything I do here at OFNR because I've got nothing to hide. I'm not ashamed. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. Oh, okay, go ahead. What, what, what bullshit, bullshit do you want to call? What, go ahead, because I'll say whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you want to talk about, I'll talk about right here on OFNR. I've talked about live shit that has happened in my personal life. I will say it. I don't give a fuck. What have I not been transparent about here at OFNR, some dude? No, I was more laughing about you got nothing to hide. I got nothing to hide. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to hide. Maybe it's very little to hide if you catch my drift. Well, look. I don't know. He, he does keep that uh, Mexican closet. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I can't keep Paco in the closet. He got deported. <laughs> ever, well, since Trump got, ever since Trump got into office, that dude's been deported. He's called in. He's left messages. We don't know where the fuck he is, man. He showed up at Namna's house the other day to fucking clean his house or some shit. And Namna's like, like, oh, why don't you go to the studio? And I was like, I don't want him here. <laughs> Motherfucker's going to get me arrested or some shit. I don't want to be deported. Hmm. <laughs> well, then you do have nothing to hide. That's right. I've got... Abs- right here. Look, I've got nothing. I really do have nothing to hide. I have actually... 
over the years, we have talked about all kinds of fucked up shit. And when this sh- station actually first started with the Neil and Bob show, me and Neil literally had a contest to see who could come on their girl's face first. And uh, I won. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a big fucking problem for me. It was just a, it was just a simple <laughs> question. Like, hey, can, can this go down? And Miss was all about like, hey, sure. Mrs. Knob was all about like, look, you, you got to win. It's your station. You got to win. <laughs> and I love Mrs. Knob. She's because of that. Uh, she's amazing. So, I mean, look, I, whatever it is, I, I really don't give a fuck. I'll tell whatever it is. I want to know, though, is this like side by side or are you just both independently? No, trying independently it? trying okay. and then uh, just being brutally honest to each so, other. Yes, yeah, so we're on the honor system. then. Yeah. And, okay. and there was no there was no hesitation. There was no there was no lying about it. It was it was very blatant and open. And in fact, <laughs> um, in July, if you catch the rewind week, you can catch every episode of Neil and Bob one of the days. I don't know which day. <laughs> Uh, but you catch every episode, and it's it's clear as day. It's in there. It's totally live, and Mrs. Not verified, and it's totally in there. It's live and direct, man. I I don't give a fuck, you know. I don't do this because I think it's gonna be fucking whatever. I just do this because it's just something I do. And and my well, I think, you know, my thing is, I don't want to sh- I don't want to shut down. You know what I mean? I, I can't do that again. I did that for a little while when my second. Son was born and and everybody gave me shit for it. I said, "Nob, you can't." And you also you also went nuts. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I went. Are, I went a little nuts mean, because I had nothing to do. I had nothing to do with my life. You know, this is the only thing I've got that actually keeps me sane. This is like therapy for me every week. It is very therapeutic to come here, motherfuck people on international radio. You know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fucking fun. <laughs> Say whatever we want. Sure. There's no censorship. No, 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 whatever. But I mean, just from a just from a financial standpoint, I really think that like I've got nothing to lose because the people that listen to OFNR are listening primarily for the independent bands anyway. You know, anything that we're playing that's signed, they've heard a thousand times somewhere else. And I mean, look, we play deep cuts too. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, especially like on this show, Indie 180, I only do independent bands here. Be this way, I can upload it to YouTube mostly. Um. But also because there's no other show like it. There's no other show out there throughout here in Connecticut, at least, that gives a flying fuck enough about the independent artists to dedicate an entire three-hour show to them. And I give a band an hour, at least. If they're in the studio, they're here for the entire three hours talking about their band and what they're up to and all that shit. Think that, some dude hates it. You think a Chaos episode <laughs> is maybe 50-50 signed and independent? Oh, yeah. Well, it depends. It depends on what we were doing that week. Certain shows were all signed shit. <laughs> yeah, certain then, shows were more independent, though. You certain know what I mean? shows were all independent, yeah. We had, so. we had a couple shows where we talked with independent bands, and we played a whole lot of independent music. Hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, I know, I know for you, it's somebody... A, I know for yeah, you... It's a hairy... It's a hairy area because, you know, yeah, you'll get a letter from every band... That you know. Well, see, I don't. Need, I don't need say, to do that. I don't need to do that. What I need to do is, if somebody were to file a DCMA violation, and for those that don't know, that's the Digital Copyright Media Act. If somebody were to file a DCMA violation on me, all I would have to do is send them a letter from whatever band they're saying I can't play, saying that I can play them. That goes true. Like Miss was saying, well, oh, so you can only play independent bands. I said, no, I could play signed bands if I had their permission. If I got the permission from Metallica, which isn't going to happen, but let's just say I got the permission from Metallica to play their newest album or any song from them, I could. And if somebody fucking filed a DCMA violation, I would say, no, I've got a letter from the band saying I can fucking play that shit. Fuck off. Go screw. But you're, you're also forgetting that even though you might have a letter from a band, if that band... Signs a label deal again. And that label again. It really, it really does. Primarily, de- it does owner. really depend. It does depend on how it's all set up. Yeah, I'm. I'm totally with you. I'm totally 100 percent with you. Because I can tell you right now, I, I know for a fact that there are uh, certain Overkill albums. Because I'm, I'm lucky and honored enough. And I, I hate to name drop, but <laughs> I'm lucky and honored enough. To call Bobby Blitz uh, of Overkill a friend, there are certain albums from Overkill 
they don't own. They yeah. don't see oh, yeah. a decision. Oh yeah, no, no, what goes no, where? No question, no question. Now, now, when it comes to independent bands, there's a lot less of that. And now there is some things. For instance, if a band goes through CD Baby, CD Baby mm. does does put out a a not a cease and desist, but like for instance, when I upload our show, this show right here, Indie One Eighty, to YouTube Mondays, uh, usually after it plays on Bull Spike Radio. Um, although the last couple of weeks I've been slacking, You're we'll talk about that in a second. Such a hole. Slacker. Um, <laughs> when I upload a show, I do get I do get notifications from YouTube. This show has been marked as copywritten by X artist for X song. You cannot then go and get monies, so I couldn't get ad, you know ad revenue from that video because that band, that song is protected under CD Baby for a copyright. I don't get the video doesn't get taken off of YouTube, which would happen if I played a sign band because that has happened to me. Um. Sounds like something Opus would do, but it is a, but is a, a it totally does. <laughs> it is a, it is a really vague and weird sort of situation, Turbo. And I'm with you 100. percent I think this long in the tooth for me, and this is just for me, uh, doing what I have done for the last almost 11 years for all the bands that I've worked with, there is not yet but one band that has ever said to me don't play this stop playing my music don't do any of that except for eight days clean i don't know if you remember that some dude but two fists of law called those guys and told them they were gonna whoop their ass and eight days clean was like yeah we don't want to be part of off and r anymore because <laughs> like two fists of law from connecticut called them up and was like yeah we're gonna kick your ass <laughs> This is many. Oh, yes. This is many yes, years yes. ago, though. This the, thing, is... the, the, the thing, though, is every band, whether it's a label or an independent, appreciates the support on every level because of the state of the industry right now. I mean, I still, you know, the new Overkill album came out. I got it. Started playing the the singles that I was allowed to play, and I was thanked by Blitz for playing it. Right. You know, and then there's a band like Silver here in New York, and they've gotten airplay on satellite radio. But when I ran into them at a show. Last summer, their lead singer, Juliana, is hugging me and thanking me for airplay. And I'm internet radio, and they've gotten airplay from satellites. Right. No, so absolutely. Like, I'm with you 100%, man. We, I've had that. I mean, obviously, I don't. See, I don't. The difference between you and I is I don't. I tend not to deal with those larger groups I, I don't get the opportunity of talking with an overkill or a Don Jameson which you just had recently or, or some of these bigger names mostly because I don't pursue I am really all about uh, money from pursue. from a standpoint I'm really all about supporting those independent artists I mean I, it's just sure. it's just the way it is for me it, you know and this is different for everybody um, I don't know well, I, I haven't I made a decision we- yet. Uh, on on whether or not we're gonna go all independent, but it is a money saving idea for me and the family. And you know, sure. with the way that things are here in Connecticut, it's a shit show. Uh, we live in a state that is fucking primarily about taxing the individuals here. So much so that a mass exodus has happened over the last two years, which over a hundred thousand people have left this state. A, a current mass exodus of all the wealthiest of people are leaving because of a a tax that has just been levied. Uh, they are currently a bunch of f- really wealthy motherfuckers totally going, you know what, we'll just cross the border to New York and we won't have to deal with this no more. It would be all of a fucking hop, skip, and a jump for some of these people. You know, a lot of these people live in Greenwich or Wilton or fucking, you know, some of those highfalutin towns, man. So it's, it's really a weird situation. Uh, and for me, it's just a money-making or money-saving idea. And, and I... 
and I've been really pondering it and, and, and pushing it back and forth, and I haven't really made a decision, but I figured I'd ask because if anybody, oh, would, under, if anybody would understand, you as a uh, owner of a radio station, Bull Spike Radio, um, sure. would, under, <laughs> would understand. <laughs> well, yeah, look, it's, it's a, one of those things where you've got listeners that love the independence. Uh, you've got listeners that love the labels and the deep cuts. And what most people forget is, well, first off, every nationally, worldwide known band was once an independent. And that's part of, I think, one of the problems with the industry in its entirety. And the other is that when you take an independent band and put it side by side with a band that is known throughout the world and maybe there is a similarity in sound someone sits there and goes wow I never heard that before they sound like so and so I gotta go look them up because I've had that from people I've had people email me or, or tweet me or email me and be like I would have never heard that band if you didn't make the comparison by playing them near each other oh no doubt and, and, and that's and, the other issue and the other thing too I think you know, and, and of course we are going to get into the actual state of the industry in just a little bit we're going to take a music break in, in a second the other thing for me is like, you know, we're going to have Jason from I Kill You on in just a little while. And I Kill You, you and I, in fact, if it wasn't for you, I would have never met I Kill You, Zero, Borgo Pass, fucking a shit ton of other bands. That's another story. If you guys didn't have a Rock Against Dystrophy show at the Trash Bar, I probably wouldn't have met half the bands that I know. Kill Code is a great example. Yes. There's a fucking, that, that is even almost an even better example than I Kill You. And I love I Kill You. And we're going to talk to Jason at nine o'clock. But, dude, Kill Code is a band that we saw to fucking, what, a dozen people at the trash bar? I mean, maybe yeah. maybe a dozen. And I'm not, I'm not trying to knock them in any way, shape, or form. I've got video of them from 2009 or some shit. Them hanging downstairs at the trash bar talking about being in a band. And, oh, we've only been a band for a year and a half or two years or whatever it was. And here they are now. They're headlining fucking major festivals overseas. Doing huge shows to fucking thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. I saw them when they were fucking 12 people deep. You know what I mean? Like, and that is like a reality. And for me, that's the excitement. That's what gives me a boner, man. Like, as a radio DJ, like, that's what, like, knowing that there are bands like I Kill Ya, like I Kill Code, like fucking a lot of these other bands that we talk about here at OFNR that are actually going on and doing something. And what about Black Water Rising? There was another one that we saw, you know, 10 people in a room, and then they went out and toured with Kill Devil Hill on a national tour. They, they've opened for a drowning mob here in the New York, New Jersey area. I mean, you, you see that and you go, God damn, maybe it's still, the dream is still there when you see that. Totally. totally, and it's and it's one of those things because there are so many bands. And I was talking to you off the air earlier about like like Crossing Rubicon. That's a band that should totally be played on national FM like radio, like on a Radio One Hundred Four or fucking any one of those stations like that that play modern rock. That band totally could be on any one of those shows. On any one of those shows, no question. Paragon Theorem, no question. Those band that band could be on any one of those shows. Vision Within from Mass, any one of those shows. Like th- these are bands. That I know personally, that I've seen live a fucking hundreds of times for five dollars or less with them and fucking ten other bands that are just as amazing. And I every time I see these bands, and this is no bullshit. I'm not blowing smoke. Nobody pays me to say this shit. Every time I've seen Crossing Rubicon, every time I've seen Paragon Theorem, every time I've seen Vision Within, I'm always beside myself going, "Why isn't this band signed to a national fucking recording label? Why aren't they being played nationally across the fucking globe?" 
I just don't get it. I, I, I just don't. I really do not understand. You take a look at Voodoo Terror Tribe. They've been around for years. Amazing they band just, live, by the way. Uh, right. They just put out late last year a new album after going out on the road with El Nino. And they're still not getting played on satellite radio or FM radio and the album is fucking amazing. I'm saying, man. Dude, you, you have no... I, I wish just one one of these days, Turbo, one of these days you got to come up here to, to Connecticut, bro, and come to one of these local shows and I will try to put on like the best show that I possibly could put on of all the amazing bands that are here in Connecticut. And bro, you would just your your fucking mouth would be on the floor. I mean, I know you've seen some of them. You saw Continuum at Rock Against History. Those guys are nuts. The the other band that Darren is in, Chaotic, fucking nasty as shit. I mean, one of the most it's brutal bands, shit. dude. I, Darren is seriously one of the best drummers I've ever seen in my life. Period, hands down. Period, including signed artist. Period, dude. That dude is dude nuts. Is yeah. And like Eyes of Dead, dude. As much shit as I give them, dude. That band is gnarly live, bro. Fucking, dude, how many mm. bands, some dude, can we name? We could spend all night just naming bands in Connecticut that are just fucking ridiculous. Pretty dope. Yeah, there's some good metal yeah. here, dude. There's awesome metal yeah, here. The, there's the same thing here in, in New York and New Jersey. Each of the places has its own different style, though, man. There's, there's definitely a different feel in the three different scenes, like the dingbats and shit, and then you go down to the city into Brooklyn and Manhattan, and then you come up here to Connecticut, dude. It's like three totally different worlds but they're all connected because we're all so close yeah dude and, and the bands like Cyperna dude that fucking band is nuts dude holy fuck man that is a band I could watch every day and not be disappointed you know what I mean like they wouldn't do it but I'm just saying like I could totally we're, fucking we're really lucky that there is a nice little pocket of some really quality brutal fucking metal and we live right near it and are a part of it and we're a part of their family you know and it's yeah, crazy. It's fucking, we're really lucky, you know. For sure. All right, look, let's do this. Really we're going to take a quick little music break. It's 8.40 already. We've been yapping and yapping and yapping. This, of course, more of a talk show than a music show because I don't get to do this very often. Holy shit. But we should play some music. Why don't we play some, some metal? We can play some Connecticut metal, even. We do the eyes. Hey, ask that fucker what he wants to listen to. Yeah, what do you want to listen to, fucker? Uh, decisions, decisions. Correct. You got to say something. I mean, garbage barge. Ooh, I don't know. You know, I gotta look. Let me see. Hang on a second. Let me see. Look. If I, look. I, I do have for sure. I do have for sure. I'm one, probably the only ones who have live garbage barge, but it's not cut up. That's all I've got is live garbage barge. Do you, do you have the early, early shit? I, I only have live stuff, so I can't play it. It's a like 30 minute set, and I'm not gonna. Scipio. Oh, some Scipio would be good. <laughs> now I gotta make another decision. That's a good way to start a. Mm-hmm. Start a music session. One more, one more song there, Bart. Come on, come on. Voodoo Terror Tribe. Uh, you had said earlier, mm. Turbo. That's some good shit, man. Yeah, we should play some Voodoo Terror. I got old shit from them, but I'm like looking around the walls. <laughs> <laughs> around here, you can't you can't go too right. far. You find some good stuff on the. On All right, the walls. well, think about it, fucker. Think about it, fucker. We're gonna take man. a quick little music break. But you know what? Break out something in memory of one of the bands you and I always got. To hang out with God bless Rick. We miss that motherfucker. Oh. God's green earth. Oh man, we played some of that shit last week, of course, for the 420 special because mm-hmm. you know it's 420 special. What about some sanitary refuse? I don't think I have that. Yeah, you do because I gave it to you. Oh, I have to look. All right, so keep <laughs> it locked. We're gonna play some God's green earth. We'll play some Eyes of the Dead. We'll play some Dream of Scipio. We're gonna come back in about I don't know, 15 or so. Don't go anywhere. It's official fucking new radio. We'll be right back for oh. State of the Music Industry Roundtable coming up with Jason from I Kill Ya. We'll get the conversation started with him. Turbo, keep on the line. Sure.
These are a few of our favorite things. Dude, you listen to corporate radio? Fuck corporate radio. OFNR. Yeah, fuck corporate radio. OFNR forever. That's where you can get us. OFNRforever.com. That right there was God's Green Earth with Buy Me a Couple of Beers. Puts a smile on my face listening to that. I love those guys. Man, every time I saw them dudes, they always rolled with a midget. And they always fucking had blow-up dolls. Every fucking time I saw them. Every single... And every time I saw them was at the trash bar. And I think every time I saw them was for either a Horns Up Rocks or a fucking Bull Spike radio show. So thank you guys, especially Bull Spike, for fucking... Hook me on to fucking God's Green Earth. That band rocks. Some Dream of Scipio in there with Hammer Time. That's some old-ass Dream of Scipio brand new music you can get from them, of course, soon. Real soon, I think. If it's not already out. That was off of New Age Exile. That is good music from Connecticut. Dream of Scipio, always a fucking fan favorite. Oh, I love me some Dream of Scipio. And then, of course, Eyes of the Dead with Judgment. It's a good fucking band. Thrust into Purgatory. That's off the week in The Wounded. That is not even new music. That's old. I play the older stuff just because it pisses off James something fierce because he's not on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, shouts to James. I'll see you on the 29th, my friend. We gotta go chucking. Fucking ain't right, we gotta go chucking. I've been saying that fucking months. <laughs> Turbo, are you there? 
Hasn't come back yet. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Oh, shit. Welcome here. back. Just played a good block. I'm here. Good block of music. We're going to have Jason Lechberg in. Now, I don't know, uh, Turbo, if you'll be able to hear him or not. If not, speak up right away, and what we'll do is I'll hang up on you and call you right back, because sometimes it's how it is connected in Skype. It's weird. Gotcha. Know. So we'll figure it out. Gotcha. In, in just, we'll figure it. Yeah. In just a couple of minutes, that's where we're going to have Jason from I Kill You. Now, with all that said, we played all that music. We've talked about a lot of things, kind of bullshitted for the first hour. Jason is going to be calling in. He's the founder of Leckberg Enterprises. We'll talk about that. He's also the front man of awesome band I Kill Ya. Uh, their last record on Megaforce Records, their newest album, not on the Megaforce um, label, on a different label. I'm not, I forget the name of it. We'll talk to Jason. We'll ask him about it. Uh, then uh, we'll be having him on in just a little bit. I'm really super excited about that because A, Jason the cool cat. B, that dude is actually in the industry, does work with Steel Panther on the regular, so knows a thing or two about what's going on. Let's talk about what's going on. Now, I've got a history here. The modern Western music industry emerged between the 1930s and the 1950s when records replaced sheet music as the most popular product in the music business. That meaning... 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s. To me, and, and Turbo chime in, to me, each one of those, when you say the 40s, I, I hear a sound. There's a sound that I correlate to the 40s, to the 50s, to the 60s, to the 70s, sure. to the 80s, to the 90s. Come 2000, that blew up, man. That, that, that was destroyed forever. <laughs> Even you could go back to the 90s, even with uh, the neutrality of a sound. Because you think back to bands, you know, everyone knows and credits Metallica and, and Anthrax as so many bands of the 80s. Right. But when you really break it down, the 90s really gave birth to Anthrax, Metallica, Slayer, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, You're right. Orgy, I mean, uh, a lot of those, so, a lot of the fans who listen to metal obviously were listening far sooner than that, but I think you're absolutely yeah. 100% correct because it wasn't until Sound of White Noise that I got into Anthrax. And then, of course, being the ridiculous collector of music that I am had to get all their prior albums and then after albums you know what I mean uh, from Sound of White Noise but I got into them that record and I remember getting that cassette man and fucking being like yo only was the single but dude we got the rest of the record to listen to now we got the rest of this cassette yo and me and me and my buddy Billy fucking sat down and listened to that fucking record front to back back to front a hundred ways Sideways, we'd go out skateboarding and we'd be having it in our fucking boombox, man. And a boombox was a thing because that's the way it was. <laughs> and now I'm old. Fuck. <laughs> old man. Fuck. So I've got here in my notes, big business controls the type of music and artists that get exposure and become popular. The record industry currently is a $14 billion business. The majority of the music market is controlled actually by three corporate labels. Universal. Sony and Warner. Now, when I was growing up, my first job, and I've said this a fucking hundred times here on Off and R, my first job ever was a record store. That's what I did. I was the manager of a fucking record store. I worked at Record Town. Then it became FYE af way after the fact. Anyway. The one by the mall? It was in the mall. The Record Town inside oh. the Danbury Fair Mall. It was a Record Town and a Tape World. This was before... The wall existed. This is before trans, all that. Then record tour town. Then the wall came in. And I worked there for a little while. And then I went out to Strawberries, which was outside the mall. Dude, I worked at the record store for most of my adult, like coming into age from the age of eighteen or sixteen. I found that working on. at Fye Ooh. sort of killed Caller. my Jason. Oh. Caller, you are on the air with official fucking new radio. What's up? What's up, dude? It's Jason. Fucking A-Ride. Jason, what's going on, brother? 
Not a lot, man. Not a lot. Just stepped out of practice for a minute to chat with you. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm not going to try to take up too much of your time since you're at practice. We are discussing. I've got Turbo on the line from Bull Spike Radio. Who yeah, what's up, dude? Yeah, you might have to ring me back. I don't hear Jason. All right, let me ring you right back, Turbo. We're gonna <laughs> let me call Turbo right back here. Hang on one second, Jason. We're hanging out. I've got, of course, some right. dude in the studio. What's up? And I've got uh, Bart in the studio as well. Hey, hey, hey. And of course, you know me. What up, dude? Uh, while we're getting Turbo back on the line, you know, before we talk about the music industry, yo, uh, you got a brand new record coming up here in the in the near future. You want to talk about that real quick? Sure. Oh, yeah, right, June second. Hey, right, what's up, Turbo? Welcome back. Hello. All right, uh, cool. Now you can hear him, right? June. You hear me? Turbo. Yeah, I think oh, he, respond, he responded to me. <laughs> Turbo, can you hear Jason at all or no? No, I just hear you, Bob. Jason, can you say hello to Turbo real quick and see if that works? What's up, dude? Nothing. All right, so Turbo, yeah. you're going <laughs> to. I don't know how this is going to work. This is. This oh. is I don't know why this is not working. Well. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, Jason, I, I got—I mean, obviously, we're going to talk to you because you're on the phone. But, uh, dude, so talk to us. Tell us when is that "I Kill You" record going to hit? The "I Kill You" record is called "War for an Idea." It drops June second via Urban Yeti Records. Uh, yeah, and then we uh, we head out on tour on May thirty first. We're going to be in your neck of the woods on June first at Cherry Street, uh, and then we'll uh, we're going doing the whole U.S. We got. Eight weeks ahead of us. Nice. June 1st. All right, I got to put that on my calendar. I'm going to put that on my calendar right now, in fact. Got to be at that awesome. show, man, uh, of course, uh, June the 1st. On the 3rd, we're, we're yep. going to be at Bacon Fest, so, I mean, we might as well just camp out at fucking Cherry Street, I guess, that whole weekend. Fuck it. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. It's going to be a good time, man. We're going to be there with, uh, with Skin Lab and Product of Hate, uh, which, you know, I'm sure you know who Skin Lab are, the legendary Skin Lab. We're excited to bring them to the East Coast for the first time in a long time. And then uh, Product of Hate, a uh, really awesome band on Napalm out of Wisconsin. Nice. We're going to be out with us as well. Well, I'll come out. I'll come out. I'll live broadcast and I'll record everything for y'all, you know? Oh, let's do it. That'll be fun, man. Fucking That'll be great. Right. Got to do it for you. So, rock on, Good, dude. Thank you. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that things are going well. Of course, you know, man, we've been, we've been supporting I Kill You. I was talking to Turbo earlier about this, man. We we've been supporting you guys a long fucking time, man. Since like oh <laughs> nine, like oh eight, something yeah. like that. Like it's crazy. Oh eight, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's crazy, and I it's think, like, yeah. and it's cool because it's like like you guys, and like like uh, Kill Code, and you know bands like that. You you see this progression of like, you know, I'm not saying that you made it. Because God knows what that's all about. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But yeah, we're, we're a long way from that. But it's cool. But it's cool. You know, your last record being on Megaforce, that was huge. You know what I mean? Like, for me, like, as a fan, that's like, you know, of course, being a fan of Megaforce, too, is huge. It was like, oh, my God. Like, one of my, one yeah. of my friends. Like, this is my friends. This is like, kill you, man. I know these guys. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, that was really cool. You know, it was great to, to work with them on that record. Um, you know, it was a one album deal and I, I really feel like, you know, we're very excited about, about being on Urban Yeti because, uh, it's, a, it's a label, it's a young label, but it's made up of a lot of industry, um, you know, longtime industry guys, uh, some guys from Century Media and Sumerian. Uh, so it's a, it's a young label that they started, they know what they're doing, but they're very, very interested in being progressive. Yeah, man. Uh, and in, you know, and in really kind of representing the modern music industry, uh, which I'm, you know, obviously I'm, I'm all about, uh, you right. know, since I work in the industry, I, I want a deal that, uh, that makes the most sense for, for what this music, what the, you know, the modern industry is really about. And, and that's what we found with him. We found a, a really intelligent forward thinking home. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Cause that's really tonight. That's really what this is all about. Um, yeah, we were talking earlier about, you know, like you can go back and trace, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and I'd say even the 90s, and have like a sound. Do you know what I mean? There was a there was a a sound of the time. Do you know what I mean? Even though mm. it might not have been mm. what you listen to, there's a sound of the 50s. You know what I mean? Like when I think of the 50s, I think of that sock hop stuff. I think of you know uh, Earth Angel and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like that's to me that's 50s. <laughs> yeah. You know. And, like, each one of these eras has that sort of thing. And, and even just this weekend, we were in the car, we were driving up to a park, and turned on the 90s station, and, like, this is how we do it came on. And I'm like, 
this isn't what I would consider 90s for me because I'm a grunge kid. But, like, it's totally a 90s song. I felt it right away. I was like, wait a minute, man. I'm fucking back in my teenage years. What do you think that's about? I mean, like, I think that's what's lacking now is that there isn't a sound of the time, man. It's not as connected, I feel. Maybe, I I don't know. Maybe I'm old. (laughs) Maybe I'm old. No, no. You know, I I think that's a a really good point. And I've never... I've never really thought about it from that angle, but I think that, that one of the, the main things that I talk about a lot about what has really changed, it's, it's just another symptom of that same thing, and that's simply the fact that, um, you know, to use a broad term, the Internet has changed the way that we communicate and the way that we live our lives so drastically. So a, a lot of the reason that there was a sound in the 50s is because there were what? 20, 30 bands, right. maybe there were right. 50 or 60 bands, right. You're because right. the way that you got music was through the labels that, that signed a band, and then they were the ones that promoted it, and it only got played on radio, and you only read about it in the newspaper, yeah, they were and the if you were lucky and they were big enough, you saw it on TV, and that was it. Well, TV you know, wasn't even TV. invented then, you know, and that's the crazy part, you know, it's, you know, it's a matter of time when you start thinking about it, you know, and, and growing up for me... And we had a band. We had a band a couple weeks ago that was really young, you know, really young band. And growing up for me, I had a record player. That's what I fucking listened to my music on a record. That's sure. what, that's what it was, man. I had a fucking a badass Harmon Carden that my fucking grandfather had given me, and that thing was awesome. Yeah. I mean, the sound on that thing was fuck, man. I wish I still had that, you know, today. <laughs> Yeah. But it's like I that, mean that's that's cool, that's, and, but that's but that's kind of the problem. It's like a double edged sword. So you know you have the fact that the internet, the internet, and things like that have allowed us to to all live very specific lives. You know, like for instance, I wear a style of boot called is made by a company called New Rock. They're out of Spain. I discovered them via the internet in the early two thousands, and that's the only thing that I've ever worn since then. Had the internet not existed, I would still probably be wearing like the Harley boots that I could find at my local Harley store because that's all was available to me. So the internet allowing us to each individual person to individualize everything about their taste has meant that there's no sound of a generation anymore because the people are able to, to go and say, oh, well, you know, I listen to electronic music, but now I don't just listen to normal electronic music. I listen to like house, dubstep, whatever, like fine, you know, or in the rock and metal world, you know, oh, I don't listen to metal. I listen to, you know, melodic metalcore. Or I listen right. to, you know, you, you can get Which, so specific now yeah. that people don't, people, and to a certain extent it's good because now people aren't having to kind of accept things that maybe isn't exactly them, but it, it spreads everything else very thin. Well, you know, and, and the worst part about this, Jason, is that I live in this dichotomy because for the last 11 years, I've run a fucking online radio station. I've run a streaming service. I've run a totally yeah. digital service. And so like, but every record that is on this digital service, all whatever amount of music, and it's a lot at this point, um, whatever amount is, it, you know, I've bought and, and actually own. And it's like, you know, I don't know, man. It's weird for me. It's such a weird dichotomy because I do have this sense of like, knowing what it means to buy a record and buy an album and and it to me it mattered like it meant something you know what i mean like it it actually i felt i felt felt connected to the band and i was so naive as a child because i didn't realize what i realize now and how much of it was like some of these bands man they sold their souls in in a sense you know all the publishing and Good God, man! And that, I guess, t- for, for from an artist standpoint, the internet has made that so much better. I, you know, it's it's tough to say because the reality is, yes, you can have more control and you can uh, you can own your revenue streams a little more, but it also means that absolutely everyone else can also. So right. the white noise is is deafening. And and let's be real, you know, the average person that's not you or me or the guys in the studio or Turbo, that's not any of them who are people who love music, who who are constantly out there voraciously looking for new music. When if you're not that person, you've got kids and you got a house and you've got a lawn to mow and you've got bills to pay and you've got whatever your job is that you have to do, music is a it's a background thing that happens. It's something that you remember from high school. You're not out there looking for new music. So when it's, 
not presented to you, you're not going to find it because yeah. you have a life that, that just doesn't, it doesn't operate the same way that our lives do, which is constantly finding music. So when you have 10 million bands to pick from instead of the 60 or 70 that we were talking about a minute ago, now all of a sudden that person doesn't know where, what to pick. They don't know where to listen. They don't know what they're listening to. They don't know where to find it. They, don't, they need that given to them. So, yes, I can control my, my earnings a little bit more, but I also now have... I'm I'm one tiny little voice screaming in a room of millions. Most definitely, as opposed to yeah. before. Most as opposed to before, where maybe if I got if I was good enough and I got through the the barriers, then I was you know one of a dozen. Now you have you have the uh, ability and you have had the luxury or whatever you want to call it of going out on the road and, and playing shows and shit. And I'm sure confident even that you have seen some bands that you are just even jaw dropped like holy fuck what the fuck is going on here i mean do you feel that like there are so many bands now that should be picked up and i mean it's just not that sort of situation anymore that's that that art is dead you know what i mean i understand that. i mean i, I accept think a, it. A, a, a little bit yeah i would also say like when i when i very first started working in the music industry i worked for i was an interning for a publisher and the guy who ran the, the publishing company came to me and he said, hey, man, like, you're young, you're on the streets, I want you to find me a band. And I got excited, man. I thought I was like, I was going to find the next Metallica or I was going to do whatever, man, I was going to do it. So I went out and I made this list of bands that I knew that I thought were great and I brought them to him. And he said, he listened to all the bands and then he said, okay, you found a lot of really good bands. You haven't found me any great bands. And I think the reality of the music industry is that that is the real difference. That's where the rub comes in. And I've seen a lot of really, really good bands. I've seen very few great bands. And it's not something that, that even necessarily my opinion is the definitive one of. But, for instance, there's that video that just went around the other day where they were playing kids, like elementary school kids, Guns N' Roses. And over half of the kids were like, this is great, I love it. Yeah, that's I saw been that. happening for for multiple generations now. Yeah, that's I saw a that. great band. I saw that. I saw that video too, where they were playing these songs for like Nirvana and Guns N' Roses and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and 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 kids, if if a human intrinsically just responds to a piece of music, there's something that exists there that's beyond being able to play your instrument and being able to do whatever. And and it's not anything that can be learned or earned. It's something that either happens or it doesn't happen. And, and so as a band, your job now is to educate yourself as much as possible, do the best work and create the best songs that you can, and then get as, in front of as many people as you can. And if your music is great and it resonates, then you're going to move on. Absolutely. And, and if, it do, you know, if it doesn't, then who knows? Maybe you're Van Gogh. Maybe 80 years after you're dead, people will love what you do. But if you're a real artist, then you're going to say, I'm going to keep doing it anyway because I love doing it. Right. Well, at that point, so, yeah, that, and, and that's <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, we were talking about that earlier, too. That's the same reason I do often art. I, I simply love finding new music. I'm, I'm a audiophile, dude. I fucking get off on getting these emails from across the planet in a foreign language that I got to fucking Google Translate to figure out the fuck they're telling me. <laughs> And then That's listen, awesome. to, you know, and then, like, I, it just recently happened to me, dude. I got an email in German, and I was just like, I have no idea what. The, I know he's sending me music, but I have no idea what he's saying. So I have to throw it to That's Google cool. Translate and get this like really off, you know, translation. But best I could figure out, it's like, oh, dude, he's sending me some cool like industrial metal from Germany. This is cool, like, you know, it's like, and awesome. it's, it's just one of those for me, you know. And I know I'm I'm not the normal consumer, man. That's always been part of my life. You know, it's the only yeah. it's the only constant I've ever had, man. And whenever I was pissed off, I could go to music, I can go to metal, and it's just to me, it's weird that we live in this age now where music is so disposable, man. And it breaks my heart in a sense. You know what I mean? Like that, it's so. But I, I think it's our fault, also, man. I think it's the musician's fault, also, because it's too easy, and we've taken advantage of that. You know, using the example of Guns N' Roses again, that's a band that all five of those members were in other bands in L.A., many, many other bands. And they ended up together a little bit despite even wanting to be together. Slash and Axel didn't want to play in the same band together. 
you know, Ozzy and uh, Tony Naomi kicked Ozzy's ass when he was in high school. He didn't want to be in a band with him, you know, but they ended up in a band together because it was only the people who worked hard enough and who were so completely 120% driven that those were the people that had to be together. And that, that kind of like thinning the herd of, of who's really, really willing to be the absolute best they can possibly be and put the most work in helped kind of thin out some of those people that shouldn't really be doing it. And now, if your bass player doesn't show up to practice, the guitar player will just play his parts and he'll put it on SoundCloud and nobody will know the difference. Right. And I, I, don't, I don't think that we work hard enough. I think we've made too much disposable art. Yeah, I, you know, in, in a way, it's it's sort of strange because you know, uh, for me, obviously, it's much different. You know, each band, and each each song, you know, the, if bands resonate with me, they get played. That's just the way it is. It's not, you know, it's yeah. it, it's really at the end of the day, I'm the music director. I'm the guy. You know, I do ask for opinions of my DJs and the guys that work with me. And we actually do that shit live on the air. You know what I mean? Like we'll just talk about, hey, here's a band that we just got. You know, I've never listened to this before. Let's listen to it together and talk about it and see what, you know. And it's it's interesting because it's like there's so many, man. I get fucking emails all the time. And just because I've been doing this for so goddamn long. And I love every second of it. And I love getting emails and please send me more. But it's like, you know, it's crazy, man, how much music comes across my desk that I'm just like, it's either really like, yeah. what, what the fuck is this? Like, where has this been all my life? You know, there's been bands that I'm like, what? There's a whole island that me and some dude found called the Faroe Islands. Dude, there's nothing but fucking crazy metal that comes out of there. It's, just, yeah. it's, it's nuts. <laughs> I know what that is, yeah. It's crazy, dude. It's fucking insane. You know, like, what the fuck? Why is there so much crazy metal coming out of that, that little island? You know, I mean, here there's you know, very limited, if not basically no rules so if we don't like a band you can just say fuck them and that band doesn't get played anymore <laughs> yeah it's not political yeah. it's just your music sucked so that's it bye-bye now you know? Tur- turbo i know you can't hear jason but i'm sure you're sitting there idly by is there a question that you wanted to ask uh jason about you know the industry and stuff like that since we've got him here on the line and, and jason thank you so much for taking a, a couple minutes out of your practice time i really appreciate it oh man i'm honored thank you well i i I took so many uh, DJ skills uh, from all the years. I have had the live uh, stream running, and even though there was a delay, I was able to to hear uh, the conversation. And I, I get Jason's point of how the technology has uh, trying to hurry everybody because. You know, you put it out on Reverb Nation and in Facebook and wherever you can Sounds just loud to and get yes, everywhere. the attention. Mm. Um, and that's the other thing, too. I mean, time, like, every band's got, uh, not to cut you off, Turbo, but every goddamn band's got 15 links of places that you can go to hear their music. You know what I mean? Like, And it's good in a way because obviously I can get there quickly. But in the same breath, it's like, good God, man, I got to know all 15 of these? Like, this is insane. I did we lose him? I don't know. Turbo, did we lose you? No. I think we may have lost Turbo, but at any rate. I know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, here. I mean, I'm here. Oh, yeah. I didn't okay. know if Jason answered, so oh. I paused. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but to... Uh, to get back to that point, too, at the same time, if the internet wasn't there, would we, and by we I mean uh, myself and, and Bull Spike Radio and you and Official FM Radio and all the other stations, would we know about those bands? I mean, I found bands... Because they followed me on Twitter. Right. And I've thought, how did I not hear these guys? Right. I mean, I have a great. Snoo. Snoo is a perfect one. Perfect example. Snoo is a perfect example, dude. Those guys rock hard, man. And I would have never known about those guys if not for you. Right. And I mean, there's a band here in the New York area called Afterburn. They're made up of members of the FDNY and I only found them because they followed me on Instagram. So it's kind of 
one of those scenarios where the industries advanced to where it's helping and hurting at the same time. So, Jason, I got a question for you, and you might not have the answer for me. But why why aren't more local stations, and I don't know how it is in New York anymore, you know, as far as rock stations go, but why aren't more local stations picking up on a lot of these independent local... I, th- I would feel like that would improve their listener base even because then their local bands are saying, hey, listen to the 95.5 K-Suck, whatever, you know, I, I don't know, may- maybe. Well, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a, couple of, a couple of reasons there. Um, I mean, I, I do want to clarify real quickly that, I, you know, I completely agree with you, Turbo. You know, it, this is, I'm not saying that the Internet is bad or the Internet is good. I'm saying that this is a reality of where we are. Right. You know, and it, and it's a double edged sword, and it's changed the entire industry, and totally. we just have to understand it. Yeah. But the the when it comes to the radio stations, so there's a, there's a couple things to look at there. I mean, the I think one of the first things is that let's be real. If you are a local band and you're putting a thousand people a night into a venue in your town, your local station is going to pay attention to you. Mm-hmm. But if you're playing, you know, trash bar, rest in peace. Uh, you know, if, if you're playing trash bar and you're putting 40 people a night into the room, that's not, that's not making any difference. That's not making enough difference for them to give you three and a half minutes of their time. Right. You're not big enough. Right. And, and, and the reality too is that, you know, and not to be a dick about it, but just to be, to be, to speak freely, you've got to be good enough to be on the radio. And there are a lot of bands that are out there who are putting out music and who are signed to labels and who are, you know, going out and hiring radio promotion companies who aren't good enough to be on the radio. And the, and the public decides that a lot of the time, uh, uh, you, know, you know, the public, the public's response, you know, if they're not listening and they're turning off the radio, then you're not good enough. You know, I'll tell you, man, um, there's a couple bands and, and you know, I'm just going to name drop bands because that's what I do, man, that I have seen locally that there is absolutely zero reason whatsoever that these bands are not on the radio. One being Crossing Rubicon. We're going to have Scott in in just a little bit. I'm not blowing smoke up that dude's ass. That's, that's a band that should be on the radio. Fucking Vision Within, dude, that, they should be on the radio. There's no fucking reason why that they couldn't be. Paragon Theorem, no fucking reason that that band could not be on regular FM radio. You know what I mean? And, and I guess... Maybe I'm just one person's well, opinion, and it's not maybe for the masses. I don't know, man. These are bands that are like, they have that sound that's modern rock. Like, what the fuck? Why couldn't they be on that? You know, and I guess because I've done this, well, I mean, I've done this for so yeah, long, I mean, I'm spoiled, bro, you know? <laughs> to, to a certain extent, I mean, you're, and, you know, I'm, I'm actually not familiar with those bands, so I, I should go out and, and take a listen to them. So I can't speak either way to the quality of their music. If you love them, then that's great. But the third reason that they may not be on the radio is the fact that radio is a business mm-hmm. and radio yeah. earns its money through many different sources. Yeah. But, uh, in order to have the ability to, uh, to properly manage the flow of things like that, there are specific people who develop the relationships who then have these relationships and call the people call, you know, music directors and program directors. And that business requires money to make it run. So if you don't have a radio team in place that's properly working this, and I'm not talking about just regionally, but nationally, uh, then then you're not gonna you're not gonna make a lot of progress. Um, you know, unfortunately now, you know, Clear Channel and Cumulus own the majority of uh, the radio stations uh, in the country, and there are a lot of other independents who are part of smaller chains, but those playlists are being set by people up high, oh, yeah. and they're looking at it across the country, and, yeah. and you know. If you're, if you're popular in Spokane, Washington, that's awesome. People in Spokane, Washington like you. But uh, if they, you're talking to a radio station that's only playing 8 or 10 or 12 current songs, right. Right? that's all right. of the new music they're playing. They're only playing 8 to 10 to 12 right. songs. Right. Three of those are being played in overnights, which really only leaves six songs for the rest of the day parts. Yeah. Are they going to take away... Like, who, whose song are they going to pull? Are they going to pull the new Godsmack song? Are they going to pull the new Metallica song? Are they going to pull the new Incubus song? Are those yeah. songs getting taken yeah. down for a local band that's yeah. popular in Spokane? You're right. Fuck you're, no. You know, you're totally right, man. It's all about rotation and fucking advertising dollars. You're totally right. 
Uh, you know, and it, yeah, and and uh, that's that's why it's such a battle to break a band. Yeah, dude, that's I, why it's so tough. And it's like you know, I, I don't want to be naive about it, but you know, in the same breath, it's like I'm so spoiled by being able to do what I do and yeah. have the ability <laughs> to to do this, and you know, and fucking find so many goddamn great bands, man, that like I think are just as good, if not better than what I'm listening to, and a lot of times better than what I'm listening to. You know, and again, this is not a blowing smoke contest. Dude, dude I kill you? Dude, sure. fuck, man. That, you guys rip, man. You guys fucking kick ass every time I see you. Yeah, and it's been a progression of kick ass. You know what well, I mean? It's just gotten better and better. What do you guys say, somebody? Jason, I got a question for you. And then, uh, and then Turbo's yeah. got one, too. Like, how many countries do you think you've been in? I'm sorry, say that again? How many countries do you think you've been in? Touring or playing music? Hmm. It's either or. Uh, we've toured in four countries. Uh, and our music being played... Uh, I mean, God, I, I, I really don't have any idea. I Probably a, a very significant number. A, a very large number, just simply because of... Uh, online radio right. and uh, and things like that. There's right. a, there's a re- there's a really cool technology called Django that uh, that actually pushes into all kinds of indie stations and cool. so yeah we've uh, we've I, I we have no idea but it's a lot I would say you know. In, yes. Next question is stations. how many states do you think you've played? <laughs> Eight out of fifty. Uh, yeah. We have we've played uh, obviously not Alaska and Hawaii, um, but we have played. It's north of 30. I think we're, we're 31, 32 states, something like that. See, that's exposure, man. That's getting out there. That's, yeah, that's, that's handshakes. Yeah. People remember yeah, you, yeah, your true. sound, your face. I mean, you connect to a lot, yeah. lot of different people. And, and sometimes it's probably to, to nobody, too. It's probably to the other bands, right? I mean, I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's but, the but, thing. You know, but that's, that's the point I was about to make with what, uh, with what was just being said. The, the powerful thing about the internet and the powerful thing about today is that if you are a band and you are making good music, you can go build your own base. You don't need to wait for national radio to play you. I'll tell you, you can right. go get in the van and go make fans. And if people respond to you and you build a business, then you have a business and you don't need a label and you don't need a radio station. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, man, there's a band. They're no longer a band and it breaks my heart, but there's a band from Massachusetts called the Fear Nothing Band. These guys mm-hmm. were, are incredible. I mean, just simply phenomenal band, okay? They put out their first record on a small independent label, put out their second record. They're like, okay, label, sign us, sign us, sign us. Nobody was like, no, nobody wanted to sign them. So they did really well on iTunes, whatever. Put out their third record on their own, fucking broke the top 10 Billboard charts in reggae on their own. And to me, that's, awesome. to me, that's a band I look up to not only because of their musical prowess and the ability to, like, I could put on one of their records and feel immediately, instantly fucking better. But, like, that's a band that is independent that eventually got tired of dealing with the labels and saying, hey, sign us, sign us, sign us, and said, fuck it, we're going to do it ourselves. And you know what? They broke the top five fucking iTunes with their second record and then broke the Billboard charts top ten with Bob Marley being ahead of them. I mean, like, okay, you're not going to beat Bob Marley's greatest hits. You know? uh, I give you I give you that. You know what I mean? But that's, that's incredible to me. And I see that and I say, you know what? It's totally possible. It's how much drive and determination do you really have as a band or as a person, as yourself included, to be able to say, and this is why I like Scotty Anarchy from Crossing Rubicon. This dude quit his job to be a musician. And to me, that's honorable because, you know, at the end of the day, he's probably making a lot more money, a lot more money as a fucking whatever he was than he is ever going to make as a musician. But he's doing what he loves. And, I, and to me, that's admirable. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and that's, that's the future. Because the bottom line is, if you sign with a record label and you have a radio team and you have a publicist and you have all these things, their job what they are there to do is to take your music and put it in front of as many people as possible. And hopefully those people will like your music and then we'll go buy your album. And then the cycle starts over. That's all they do. Yeah. So if you are willing to work hard enough to just go replace what those people are doing, then you're doing the same job. You're already doing it. And if you're doing it yourself and you haven't signed to a record label that's taking 70 or 80% of your, of your sales, if you're not going into huge debt with a record label and people like that, then you're building your own business. 
you start touring regionally and then you're touring nationally and people are coming out and you're worth more and more money in every place, you build that same business. You're replacing that model. The signing to a label is a shortcut to that. Yeah. Or supposedly it's a shortcut. Well, if people and, respond to your music, it's a shortcut. And but if people are going to respond to your music anyway and you're willing to work, then you can just, if you're willing to work hard enough, you can go build it yourself. Well, and the other thing is that I think a lot of people outside don't maybe understand is like a record label is only a loan. It's no different. Oh, than yeah. get, it's no different than <laughs> getting a mortgage or a car payment. You have to pay that money back. It's not like they just give you a million dollars to go do whatever the fuck you want with. You got to make music and yeah. make that money back, man, and make an impact. You know what I mean? Uh, GNR, if they didn't, if that shit didn't fucking fly, they would have never fucking trashed hotel rooms. They would have fucking been on the on the curb, you know, fucking sitting there like with you well, know, with the thumbs up. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing because the money isn't in the music industry anymore. Those things would never Guns N' Roses would not be signed today. No. Allison Chains would not be signed no. today. Motley Crue would not be signed today because a manager, an agent, a record label, any of them would walk in, look at those heroin addicts, and go, absolutely fucking not. I don't care how good their music is. There's not enough money in this for me to go through all the bullshit I'm going to have to go through to keep you alive. Yeah, the liability. And the li- yeah, the liability, absolutely. Now, Turbo did have a question. Turbo, uh, if you uh, had a question oh, for Jason, go ahead. I'm just sorry I had to kill the live feed. I understand. So we didn't have uh, a delay. There was something I, I wanted to bring up, and I wanted to get Jason's take on it. Uh, that, that I've noticed from my end working both sides, working the independent side and the major label side. The New York area, since... I got started in 2009, venues have disappeared, uh, and it's gotten harder and harder for locals to compete, and I find people finding reasons to not go out to the local shows, even if it's a killer lineup for a, a low cost, there's reasons not to go, and I'm wondering how much attention the labels are paying to the local scenes, because I've noticed in recent years a lot of national bands are less likely to come through the New York area as if they know the crowd doesn't go out and support their own locals, why would they bother coming to see us? Uh, and there's a couple things to unpack there. I mean, I think the first thing, and, I, and what I would say is probably the biggest issue, is that America in general um, is not publicly, part of our, our culture right now is not live music. It's not live uh, instrument playing music a lot, at least. That's not really what's part of our culture. When you listen to commercials and you listen to the music in the background of TV shows, it's electronic music, it's EDM, it's DJs, that's, that's kind of what our culture is currently about. So, so that's definitely had a big impact on it. And then I think when you take into, a, into account the fact that, you know, let's, let's be real, if you're talking about local shows that, that like we're playing, we're talking about going to Cherry Street, we're talking about going to Trash Bar, which are both good venues, but there's a lot of other places that I won't name that aren't as good venues, that don't have as good PA systems. And the average consumer, if you're going to ask them, hey, here's your Friday night, you've been working all week, now I want you to go to this bar that has questionable sound and listen to five bands that you've never heard of before who are probably all working out their kinks and maybe the drummer's not really as good as he should be and the bass player's going to get a little too drunk. And so now you're listening to a band that's, that's still working out their stuff and they're not really as good as they could be in a room that sounds bad and you're a person that doesn't understand the difference between bad PA and bad band, that's a whole ball of stuff that it takes a very special person to really say, I want to go experience this and I want to witness the growth of these artists and these musicians. Mm-hmm. So even, even in the best of times, I would say that the people who are coming out to see local, local shows are, are very special and, and a small breed of people. And as culture changes, 
there's even less of those people around, obviously. Yeah, um, no question. I mean, as, look, as far, we, we even see that here. Uh, I mean, and we, we are very fortunate. We said that earlier. Some dude, you said that earlier. We are very fortunate here in Connecticut to have some really talented fucking musicians. Really awesome metal. <laughs> yeah, it's just brutal <laughs> yeah. shit. And, you know, even here we have that experience where it's not always as good as it could be. You know, there's no reason that there shouldn't be 300 people deep but yet there's only 50 people deep. You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason yeah. that there shouldn't be 300. You know, there's no, no, no fucking reason at all. It just isn't. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. oh, fuck, man. You're missing just, a really great people, experience people right now. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's, that's an experience that, that we enjoy. Some other people don't enjoy it. Some other people don't know that they're going to enjoy it. Yeah, sure. It's, it's just not, not part of our culture. You yeah. know, I mean, if, even if you look back at what was happening just in the rest of the culture where, you know, on, in sitcoms before, you would have characters in the sitcoms would go out to a bar to see a band. That doesn't happen anymore. You don't yeah, see that right. happening in sitcoms right. now. That's not oh, wow. not part of even what's portrayed as life. Wow, you, you know, know, I didn't remember when Jason. Remember, I, I didn't even remember think of in that. that that's, oh, sir? That's that? that? I didn't even think of that, man. That's fucking. That's pretty crazy. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's not even portrayed yeah. anymore. Even being a I mean, rock I mean, star. Even like being Ace, a rock look star. Look at Ace Ventura. Yeah, the first the first Ace Ventura movie. Who was in that Cannibal Corpse? I think it was. Yeah. He, yeah. he wound up at a, at a packed out Cannibal Corpse show. What's the, I mean? Think about the most recent comedy you've gone and seen. No, none of the characters ended up at a show at a live show. Like that's not. It's not. It's just not part of our culture now. So. Yeah. That just means that the people who are going to be diehard enough to really want to experience early days of an artist are, are even smaller, because that was all, always a minority. You know, and, and then to his point about you know, bands national skipping New York, there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, I, I think, to his, for one, we've lost several venues because, again, the public doesn't like to go out and, and see shows. So you know, we have this kind of disparity where we have big venues, really big venues, and then we have really small venues, and we kind of our middle sized venues aren't. We don't really have as many of them anymore. So that's kind of a problem for a band. Do they do like a super underplay at St. Vitus, or do they go and try and do you know a larger room where it may be half full? And you have to remember that you know New York and L.A. That's where the music industry is. So if a band comes through New York, they're inviting out every single person that works on their team that's associated with their team. They're inviting people out from WWE. They're inviting people out from Jägermeister, from all the brands, all the TV stations and everything. And if those people show up and there's a half full room, then they're going to go, oh, well, this band must be over. There's not even anybody here. Why should we care about this? There's not any people in the room. So I think you're seeing some bands skip New York just simply because they don't want to take the risk. They'd rather just let it be unknown how important and popular they are than have a half full room and make them look bad. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. And, and, and again, that's semi-true here in Connecticut. I've always wondered why Connecticut was the redheaded stepchild in between New York and Mass. And, and, and what you're saying rings very, very true in the sense that, like, you know, yeah, you could go and play Cherry Street. It's a great venue. I fucking love it. But from a from a national band perspective, you know, the amount of money that needs to be there, you know, and I'm not saying that at a Cherry Street, it wouldn't, because of course they've got, you know, great bands coming through all the time. Tim Owens was just there. Green Jelly's coming through there. You guys are coming through there, of course. Uh, but like, you know, when you have a smaller venue that can't really keep up with that, they're not going to, uh, it's, perpet- I don't know, man, it's, it's hard to. Well, it, I think the point that you were making is very good. It is, it is also about the money because once you get to a certain size, you've got you know, a stage and you've got a crew. And even if you've got a small crew and you just have a front of house guy and a merch guy and a guitar tech, you know, those guys are salaried employees. Yeah. They get paid no matter if you lose or you, or you don't or you make money. It doesn't matter. So they're, so then you have a, a floor. So this band is out there touring and they're saying we have to make X amount of dollars a night or we can't even pay our crew. Yeah. Not to mention the band making money. We have to, these are our expenses. This is what it costs us to be out here putting on this, sh- this level of show for people. Yeah. And of course you can make the argument about whether they're overspending and blah, 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 whatever it may be. And that's individual, you know, it depends on which band it is, but. But for the most part, you know, those are those financial things have to be taken into account. It could be a really cool show for a, you know a larger national to play Cherry Street, but they're going to lose money. They're they're going to pay to play that show, and that doesn't make financial sense for them because they're trying to pay their mortgages too. 
Yeah, most definitely. It's a, at, at the end of the day, it's a business, and and that's and that's that. You know what I mean? You know, if you yeah. if, if you want to get to that level, you know, some bands just do it at the end of the day because they love it, and because they want to play, and they don't mind playing. You know, the the smaller venues or the hometown shows all the time because they're just doing it because they fucking get a kick out of playing. You know what I mean? And sure, they'll play an out of state show here or there, but at the end of the day, they're not looking to become huge rock stars they're just playing because they're fucking love of music and at, yeah. the, end of, at the end of the day you know what true. those people are honorable too and and nonetheless are just as kick-ass in a lot of senses you know a lot of these people that have families and stuff because you know i get a chance to to hobnob with the local connecticut alums you know quite frequently i'm always out at shows as often as possible and it's cool in a sense because I get to hang out with these people and, and become friends and, you know, have these really cool relationships with these amazing musicians that will never probably get anywhere as far as, you know, the industry goes. And yet they have totally impacted my life. Like some of the local bands here definitely go on my top 10 of bands that I've ever seen live or you know, like just musically, it's like fuck yes, I is definitely in the like, top ten of bands that I like, man, for sure, because that shit is fucking crushing, man. Yeah, I mean, and then, it, and that's what it's really about. At the end of the day, you're making art because you want to do something that fulfills you, and you want to emotionally resonate with other people. So if it's resonated with you, then it's valid. And and at that point, it's about whether or not an artist can structure their life in such a way that they're able to continue to do what they love. And at some point they may reach a point where they say, okay, you know, I, I just can't pay my bills anymore. You know, I mean, if, if you worked at McDonald's and they just t- kept telling you to come in and work for free at some point you would go, okay, I have to find another job, Yeah. you know? So, you know, you, they may, they may reach that point or if they can find a way to structure it for themselves, whether that's, starting their own business that they can do on the road and they can be from where anywhere or, you know, whatever it may be, it's, it's different for each individual person. But if they can find the way to, to be able to continue to make the art, then, then hopefully they'll continue to be able to do it and, and get the validation out of it. But it's, uh, you know, at the end of, at the end of the day, it is, it is still a business. And, um, and, and if you, you, you should be getting out of it, what you're looking to get out of it. If you're expecting to, to be making millions of dollars, I hope that, you have two turntables and uh, and an 808. And a microphone where it's at. Oh. And a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the 90s. Two turntables, two turntables and a microphone is where it was at in 94. Two turntables and the 808 is where it's at in 2017. Right. right? The 808. Oh, <laughs> shit. Busting out the 808s, motherfuckers. Get out of the way. Righteous, man. Well, listen, <laughs> look, we've taken up so much of your time, man. I really appreciate the conversation, bro. I, I, I cannot thank you enough. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, well, I mean, like you have. Thank so you, much- man. I mean, I, we're honored that you guys, you know, that you give a damn about the band and, and want to hear what I have to say. And so I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to uh, to chat, and uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in person soon. Oh hell yeah, man! Hey, hey Jason, if if you ever, yes, sir. by chance, you know, have a tour stop in like the Buffalo area, you got to take your ass yeah. to Mighty Taco. <laughs> yes. Okay. I've been there. We're we're there on July. <clears throat> 15th, July 15th, we're playing, uh, God, I'm totally blanking on the event, Stamps. July 15th, we're playing Stamps in Buffalo with Dude. Uh, Product of Hate and Long Cold Dark. Dude, you should get hit yourself up. some Mighty Tacos. You should have some, yeah, your, some, your, some, right. some of your peeps yeah, in, in Buffalo and tell them to go see that show, man. Word? Yeah, yeah come on. Tell my fucking attorney. Good time. Yeah, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah, go see I Kill You, man. This is mm-hmm. good, good for you, man. Bring us some Mighty Taco. See, random chaos shirt yeah. flipping you off in the crowd somewhere. You got there, brand man. new music, of course. <laughs> oh, fanar has got it. We are, we are very uh, fortunate enough to have brand new music from I Kill You. So, but are you, thank you, sir. We should play that. Hey, wait, you got it. We do we have your permission to play oh, right. the song? Right. Yeah, hey, actually, that's a good question. Before I let you go, uh, I was talking okay. to Turbo over there because, like, for for me, like, you know, the the royalty thing is really starting to become kind of a burden in a sense, you know, because I'm paying mm-hmm. an awful lot of money for, you know, I, I'm not getting huge numbers for for listeners, you know. I mean, I do have people that listen worldwide, sure. but I'm not getting huge numbers. But I'm paying an awful lot for that. And I was thinking to myself, if I went all independent, I have then no issue to have to like pay in 
any more money because these bands want me to play their music. You know, they're they're satisfied with mm-hmm. me doing that. I mean, what what's your thought process on me switching from an a a you know everything kind of station to an all independent station? Any thoughts on that? I mean, it, you know, it's really up to uh, it's, it's up to what you want to do and and what makes you happy. You know, it, it, it's it, it is a very hairy conversation because on one side of it, as a rights owner. I definitely understand the uh, the importance to to make sure that I'm monetizing you know my art as you know as we've been talking about this whole time. We've yeah. the theme has come up multiple times about go out and get your money, go out and and control your career and and make all the money. And if you're you know if radio stations are running ads and and they're promoting it and and they're making money off off of your music being played there and they're playing it and people are tuning in and going I want to hear that song so I'm going to listen to this ad then there is a very legitimate argument to say, hey, you just made money off me. Why did I not make any of that money? Right. Um, on, the, on the other side of that, you know, there's a the huge argument to be made, which is the argument that radio has lived by for their entire existence, yeah, which well, is this that is a, if this, we didn't play it, nobody would have ever heard you. Well, this is a huge, this is a huge deal right now, actually, in FM, and maybe uh, some of the outsider fans might not know this. You know, as an internet radio guy, I do keep a pulse on, you know, radio and what's going on in the industry. And uh, FM radio currently right now is actually in a fight with Congress and the Copyright Protection Board to finally pay royalties on what they've been playing or, you know, what they're playing now, at least per play. And if they put this per play in, I mean, that this is why I'm, I'm concerned. I'm already paying a quite a quite a substantial amount for you know doing what i'm doing and for me it's it's really the only reason all art exists is to support my independent scene whether that be globally locally whatever mm-hmm. so it's like i mean it, look it, it comes down to what kind of business you want to run you know uh, the united states and china are the only two countries or excuse me the united states and north korea are the only two countries uh in the world that don't have live performance royalties. Um, and that's kind of crazy when you think about that. Uh, you know, if, if you were to be in a position where you would need to pay live performance or, or, you know, performance royalties where you would need to begin paying that stuff, uh, then it, then it comes a question of, okay, how do you generate money? And then it maybe, maybe your station is less, uh, is, is less just of a fun thing, and it and it takes you more. And, it, and I don't mean I, that sounds kind of slighty. And I'm sorry, I, you know, I, you know, I respect what you hey, do. Man, dude, what, I mean. hey, what I mean is like, give it to me straight you, because you, you know what? Say, give yeah. it to me. Give it to me no, straight. But, give, it, I mean, give it to me you, straight you because at the end of the day, and, yeah, you have, you have to sit down and go. Okay, how do I generate money? How do I bring on advertisers? How do I sell other things? How do I do these things to to make my station make money so that I can pay what needs to be paid? Right, right, and that. You know, and, and so that maybe where and then it becomes like a real radio station where now you're concerned about, okay, these songs that I'm playing, do I love it or do my listeners love it? Right. You know, and, right. and I that's a debate that happens a lot. When I'm working with clients and we have songs at radio, we'll have a PD say to us all the time, man, I love this song, but my listeners do not give a shit about it. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know, you're right, man. And, right. and, and you know, it, it's... For me, this has always been a labor of love. I mean, the last 11 years really has just been, it's to me, it's my local band. You know, I'm not a very good musician. I never really was. This, to me, is something I'm really good at. I've got, you know, a certificate to do it. You know what I mean? Whatever. And that's how I started mm-hmm. the station. I, but me and a bunch of certified broadcasters started up a station because we felt, you know, it would be one of those things where we can't, we can do whatever the fuck we want. You know what I mean? This is, we, yeah. have, we have free reign to do whatever the fuck. I can come on here anytime I want and say whatever the fuck I want. And whether I have listeners or not is a different question. But I could, yep. you know, potentially. For me, you know, well, and I just love... It's the same I, argument that a band has. Yeah. You're exactly right. Because I could, I could record any music I want and I could put it on SoundCloud and it doesn't matter if I have any fans. If I care about fans and I care about making money then maybe I need to step back and take a look at something. And maybe I need to get that two turntables and eight away. Yeah, no, you absolutely. Know, and, and that's and at that point, it's a, it's a, it's a look into yourself. And I, and I appreciate what you're saying because for me, I'm, I'm at that, at, at that point in my, in my career of doing this now, 11 years, I've been spending an awful lot of money and I'm not seeing a whole lot of money coming back. And I don't really give a fuck at the end of the day, because for me, it's all about loving music and finding a way 
to love my music and and spread what I'm loving. Like, yo, I love this band and you should fucking check them out. You know, like check this shit out. It's fucking awesome. It's good shit. You know, that's really yeah. what it comes down to. And at the end of the day, that if, if as long as I can do that, then I don't give a fuck. So for me, if if that means going all independent, then so be it. If I if I can't get all the bands to get on board, then those bands don't get played. I guess. I what can I do? I mean, you know, <laughs> I it, yeah. it, to me it, the financial. I don't want to get advertisers. I just have no interest in ever doing that. Like, I don't want to subject my listeners to that. You know what I mean? I guess that's why I'm not a real radio station. Fuck ever. doing real commercials, man. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, I would not use the word real because I, that, that doesn't apply. You, you are not a commercial radio station. Yeah, that's well, I'm true. definitely, you definitely not, not a corporate. But, but you're, you're still, you're, you're, yeah, you're not corporate, you're not commercial, but you are absolutely very much real. Yeah. And you're having you know, in intelligent discourse, you're sharing your opinion and you're playing music. And that's a beautiful thing. That's an honorable thing in the same way that any local band who's out there saying, this is my art and this is what I have to give is honorable. Well, you and, know, and that choice about, you know, commerce is just simply the, you know, one of the shittier parts of life. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're right on the money. And I mean, you know, look, I'm not trying to, to take anything away from any artist that i would ever play it's just uh from a financial standpoint i'm looking at the numbers and it just doesn't add up you know and i start thinking yeah. and i start thinking to myself how could i do this still and and do what i love and what i love is talking to independent bands and talking to bands that are you know and i mean obviously you're the exception in the sense that you've grown from being just an independent band to really you know making a a mark not only with your music, but in the industry as a participant, you know what I mean? That's why I respect having you on is because you actually know a fucking thing or two about what's going on and you can shed some light on that shit for the rest of us dumbasses who, who don't know <laughs> any better. You, 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 guys, you guys are not dumbasses, man. I'm, I'm not an electrician. So that, that's all it is. It's, yeah, right. it's just about where I went to school. For that's sure, that's right. all. That's all. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a, I'm a dumbass to an electrician, but you're not a dumbass. You just, didn't go to the school yet. So That's right. It's all good. That's right, man. Well, thank. Hey, look, man, Jason. Thank you so much for calling in and, and talking with us for a while and giving us some some insight about this. We're gonna take a music break. I'm gonna play some brand new "I Kill You," of course, because that shit needs to be thank played you. as as often as possible. It's well, awesome. You got a track request? <laughs> yeah, you got a you got a track request. I mean, is there something you want to <clears> hear <throat> besides besides, uh, besides I mean, your own band, of course? Yeah, if you're playing the new stuff, man, that'd be great. I, I you know I'd love you to. Uh, to play that, play your God. That's great. We'll have another new song uh, in about a week and a half, which I obviously will very will send you as soon as we have it. Nice. Um, but uh, but your God uh, would be great to hear that. And uh, as far as other stuff, man, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't even right. I don't know. There's, there's so many good bands up there. Uh, man, that New Jersey uh, Metal Fest that we went to, the South Shore Metal Fest, man, like, that it was just so chock full. Oh, Who were you God. mentioning a minute ago? Uh, who did you mention a minute ago? Oh, Cyperna, dude. Cyperna? That shit, yeah, that shit Cyperna. is. Cyperna. That shit is. Way damn. Holy crap, oh, they're great. Fuck, dude. That, that drummer, dude, Sean Cavanaugh is no shit. Like, that dude, every time I see him play, it's like, dude, why are you not breaking things right now? Like, things should be breaking and there should be shattering of things because you are hitting things very hard. <laughs> yeah, that band is awesome. No, Love that band. Definitely play some of them. All right, we'll play some Cyperna and, of course, some I Kill You. And, Jason, thank you so much. Uh, Turbo, stay on the line. We're going to have. Scotty in in just a little bit from Crossing Rubicon, and we'll be hanging out here some more on uh, the ind independent Indie 180 Music Industry Roundtable, whatever you want to call it, I guess. <laughs> it's like a very long name. Uh, we'll be back in just a little bit. Jason, thanks so much for calling in and talking with us, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I'm honored. Later, man. Take it easy, Faku. See you later. Bye. All right, we'll be back in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. It's official fucking radio, Indie 180. I kill you. And fuck you, Bart, and fuck you, Nub. And oh, okay. All of a sudden, my thing is uh -oh. being stupid. Yeah. What happened to the IQ? Oh. Nice.
Wow, that was some Borgo fucking pass. Hey, Nub, if, yeah. if you're a guy, are you actually obligated to use the bathroom, or is it still okay to just go outside and You pee? can piss outside, that's fine. Yeah, right. I think so, too. That was some Borgo fucking pass with uh, <laughs> Flesh and Bones, some older stuff, man. We haven't played that in a long time. Borgo pass. That some Cyperna the in there with segments, and two from I Kill You, but they weren't back-to-back. Uh, I Kill You with Vivictus and uh, Your God. Not back-to-back. They were split by a Cyperna. And that's appropriate. Hmm. That's okay. Because Jason asked for the uh, site burner. All right. Yeah. Turbo, you still with us? Maybe not. I'm sure. here. All right. There he is. The man. I'm here. The myth. The legend. Turbo. Go check out TurboRules.com. Tell the webmaster he's a piece of garbage. <laughs> yeah, tell the web guy. Figure out what the, the hell the bugs are. Yeah, seriously. What get those the, gremlins the out of there. What the fuck? Dude, the other day... A couple weeks back, we were we went on the site like live right here on the air, and it was just the banner. I was like, "The fuck is going on?" So I disabled that, and sure enough, the rest of the website came up. I'm like, "What the fuck? Some serious fucked up shit." And they want me to pay. I'm like, "I'm not paying. Fuck you." Crazy shit. Yeah, man. What a great what a great time we talked with uh, Jason from I Kill You. I'm sorry you didn't get a chance to uh, jump in a little bit more there. I don't know what the Issues are, but you know how computers go. Uh, it's all good. I have, uh, I've had headaches like that on my end, so you know, trust me. As a fellow DJ, I understand the way it goes, so it's all good for sure. Now uh, we do have a little bit of mic noise coming from your end too, just as a a shout out, let you know if that's happening. Probably the. Fan in the background blowing into my mic. Ah. I, I, I would you believe I have heat in my building today? Oh, that's good because it's only seventy degrees outside. Yeah. <laughs> right, the humidity is through the roof, and I, I've got heat. So oh, I'm sitting here with windows open, a fan on me, and. I'm still sweating. Yeah, I heard that. In your box of briefs, too, no less. Somebody's got a boner now, too. I just wanted to put that out there. So, you know, Mr. Turbo, I I got a long drive up here, and I was thinking, man, I don't think I've ever actually talked to Turbo on the radio before. I'm like, well, what the fuck am I going to say to this dude? And, well, the only thing I could think of was just to tell you to go fuck yourself. Yeah, sure. And... Hey, you wouldn't be the first. <laughs> right. That's and that you know, and that in a nutshell is some dude for the most part. That that in a nutshell is I, I get the most foul texts from this guy throughout the day, and 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 I respond in kind. I, I'm not going to be uh, you know shy about it. I definitely send him very <laughs> offensive because it's very unusual that I could think of somebody that I have not at some point told to go fuck off. You That's know? true. <laughs> so. There you go. You've been blessed with the proper fuck off tonight. There you go. And we go. See now it's official. Yeah, that's official. That's right. <laughs> so I got official, I, official right here on official FM radio and syndicated on Bull Spike, of course. If I get the show over, because I got to stop slagging. That now uh, we are wa- we are awaiting the uh, arrival of Scotty Anarchy from Crossing <laughs> Rubicon. He'll be in shortly. While we await him, uh, Turbo. I don't know if I've ever asked you. Do you, what was the first album you? ever bought and what's the most recent album that you bought the first album I ever bought with my own money was Aerosmith Pump nice that's a great fucking record too by the way and that's because you know 13 year old Turbo heard Love in an Elevator and went my life revolves around fucking elevators. <laughs> yeah, right? That could, that could be me one day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, Turbo, since since first hearing that song and to now, have you ever had love in the elevator? Uh, not yet. Still uh, waiting. Yeah, still waiting. It's going to happen one of these days, buddy. I'm pulling for you. Yeah, sooner or later, I'm bound <laughs> to get some girl <laughs> drunk enough to realize... I ain't that bad looking. Yeah, right? Exactly. Hey, look, you and I both have a face for radio, so it's okay. 
Exactly. <laughs> Thank God my kids look more like my wife. That's all I got to say. Uh, as to the other question, the album I most recently bought, uh, you gotta bear with me because I've actually bought a lot of albums. Yeah, no doubt. To see, uh, uh, here's recently. something just for the listeners to know Turbo of Bull Spike Radio, just like Nob here at OFNR. We are of the rare breed. Not only do we play the music that we love, but we also buy everything that we play. And that includes the independent bands. Nine times out of ten, I actually buy the record. And if they won't let me buy the record, I'll buy a T-shirt from them because, by fuck, I'm supporting the band, goddammit. I don't give a fuck. Fine, okay, I won't buy the record. Give me a fucking $10 T-shirt, dude, because I need another one of those because I don't have enough. Mrs. Knob is going to throw me out with my t-shirts, and that's all I'm going to have. But I'll have enough to make a fucking tent, so it's cool. And enough to make a mattress. Yeah, totally. Dude, and then some. Hey, he talked, dude. <laughs> he talked, Bart. Bart talked. Bart. He talked. <laughs> hey, Turbo. Um, Turbo, I... you got a question for Bart? He's yeah, just sitting Bart, here. Bart's, he's actually, saying, shit. Bart's actually the uh, basis for a Connecticut metal band called Chaos Rain. Uh, they're a damn fine metal band. You should check them out. Everybody should go check them out on Facebook. Chaos Rain. You're in a band. With a K K A O S R E I G N. Chaos Rain. Yeah, so check it out. Technically not anymore. If oh you're not in te- you're not in K. Ca- oh I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up bad news. <laughs> I'm sorry. Breaking not- news. Yeah, breaking news here at Ofenar Bart is no longer in Chaos Rain. Any any comment? No comment. Okay, good. Nah. Some dude, did you want to comment about being? You play my industrial shit later. I'll comment of, uh, on that. Out of out of chaos, right? Because you also got kicked out recently. I'm in that band too. Oh, you were. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I still have that part. You may. Am I to. famous? You might be. You said you did. I, yeah, you I read th- me the I, name earlier. I thought right? I did, and, and then it didn't play. I don't know. Do you have any opinions you'd like to share about knob shenanigans this evening about a bunch of dudes whacking off at a round table and talking about music? I have to go get my thumb drive. <laughs> yeah, you should do that. <laughs> Is that what we call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, I mean, growing up, I mean, Turbo, I know you're not as old as I am because I'm an old bastard, but... I didn't didn't buying records feel like you were doing something right? I mean, I don't know, man. To me, it felt ah. like I, I was part of something. I, and I know I wasn't. I'm so naive now, but like, it really felt like I was doing something right. I mean, I still do it, hoping that it'll, it'll make a difference. I mean, look, I, my family wants to, to throw me out because I've got more CDs than I've got room to to store, I've actually kind of getting to the point now, which I, I hate to do, that I'm buying off of iTunes just because I'm running out of room for physical. Yeah, physically. Car- yeah, copy. yeah, absolutely. Dude, and I'll tell you honestly, dude, when I first moved from Connecticut to Massachusetts, I, I worked at the record store still, and the shipment boxes filled 250 fucking CDs in a shipment box. I brought seven fucking shipment boxes from Connecticut to Massachusetts in a one room, not a one bedroom, a one room apartment with two people and 700 shipment boxes, 250 each of CDs. I remember clearly going through those CDs and going, okay, I don't need this anymore. I don't want this anymore. And just, just like, I should have never done it. But I, we threw out so many fucking CDs that day, man. Like it had to be like two or three shipment boxes worth of CDs went in the garbage, man. It was for insane. Shame. I had two filled. It was insane. It was just mind boggling to me now because I mean, growing up, dude, no lie, I had uh, my wife can attest to this because she was my girlfriend at the time. And dude, I had a wall of CDs and I knew when something went missing. Like my sister would take something and I'd be like, I'd walk in and I'd be like, there's something missing. Now, there's a thousand fucking CDs on the wall, but I knew there was something missing. I'm like, there's something missing. Momo, pull on the mic. Get the fuck down here. Do you got this CD? She's like, yeah, I got it. It's right here. 
I'm sorry I didn't mean to take it, but it's really awesome CD. Like, just tell me next time. And my, Miss would be like, what the fuck? How do you know? Like, dude, that's crazy. It's insane. Like, it was nuts, dude. It was insane. Right. I, I, like, I, it I, meant I, so always, much to me, bro. Uh, I, I've always been that way. I mean, when Sam Goody still existed as a music store, uh, you know, there was one in the Roosevelt Field Mall that we would go to an evening if we went to the mall two or three weeks in a row. I always came up with money to go down there and at least walk out with one album, whether it was brand new came out, something I didn't already own, and I just kept forgetting to pull it off. I mean, it got to the point where the people that worked there, when I rolled into the store, they would put something on that I bought the last time I was there. Right? And so, like, yeah, just just on purpose, like, yeah, we know. We know. We know what you're buying, man. We know what you're getting. See, for me, it was like, dude, growing up, you know, and especially being in the record store, man, we used to get promos and stuff, so we'd play the shit out of artists. And, you know, like... John Mayer, man. I knew John Mayer before John Mayer was John Mayer, bro. Like, that's no joke. Like, I, I knew that artist way before he ever made it big. Dude, same with Kid Rock, man. I actually met that dude way before he was, like, Kid Rock, famous, going to the White House, whatever. Like, dude, I met him and hung out backstage with them because I knew the guys from Atlantic Records. Like, I, I, like I, there was a connection there, you know? And it's like, it's to me, it's crazy now thinking, like, Kudos to Metallica for getting a platinum record this year because the last two years there's not been what two and they've both been Taylor Swift if you don't count the Frozen soundtrack like it's, or Adele it, yeah or Adele it's it's insane to me because growing up man platinum records that was like a thing man it happened all the time you know and people would line up outside Tuesday morning at the record store before I opened the gate and there'd be people waiting like waiting to buy the newest shit you know the newest Fifty Cent the newest whatever. Coming I out. always I would always go to the stores. I would try to purposely make sure I was going to get to the mall the weekend after an album came out. Because remember, years ago, albums came out on Tuesdays, and I would make a point to get to the store that weekend, knowing that the first week. The album would be like $13 instead of $18. And when you're looking to buy more than one new album a week, when you've got artists putting new stuff out on the same day, that dollar price, yeah, it would save you. It would add up. Well, you know, and I'll tell you what, man. I, th- I honestly believe not, not only did the Internet kill the industry but the reason the internet killed the industry is because cds were so goddamn expensive cds were 20 goddamn dollars a pop and now i'm somebody over the last 11 years i've actually put out a cd or two and uh i know that it don't cost that much money to put out a fucking cd i can sell them for a buck a pop and probably still make a profit Mm -hmm. you know if i went to staples and i got the cds printed like what really is it going to cost me two three bucks so I charge him five, and boom! Now you got a full CD for five bucks, with art and everything else in hand. Like, dude, it didn't cost no twenty fucking dollars. You were just being greedy, and because you were being greedy, when the internet hit and was like, "Oh, yo, we'll give it to you for free," everybody's like, "Oh, free? Yo, free? I can get it for free?" And now, what's weird for me is, you know, being the fact that we've done this Napster. this show a one hundred and one times now. Uh, uploaded to YouTube. This is the 101st episode of Indie 180, according to YouTube, at least. I've got plenty of others. But uh, according to all those, you know, we've talked about multiple times how messed up and and, and insane, like, music and computers are now one, and there's nothing we can do. I've talked, there's this dude, Jazz Ann Wild from California, does comics, and then does music to the comics. It's fucking awesome. It's really cool. Jazz and Wild. Go check them out. Anyway, 
he was saying, you know, there has to be a new revolution in music, something to fucking make people give a fuck again. And I really, I, I still firmly, that was many, many moons ago. And I still firmly believe what that dude was saying, man. There needs to be a new revolution to make people care enough to go out of their way to get something. And the problem is now it's harder and harder because the brick and mortar stores are going out of business. That's why I say as often as possible, go to your fucking local record store and buy something. Anything. I don't give a shit what you buy. I buy physical CDs off of Amazon now. And I'll tell you what. I get a fucking deal and a half on CDs. Turbo, I don't know if you're old enough, man, but I'll tell you what. Nothing beats Columbia House. Holy oh, crap. Dude. Dude, I used to take those guys for oh. a ride and a half, bro. And I'll tell you, you know, you you would you would get your your twelve CDs for a penny, then you'd pay for three, and then you'd quit, and then they'd ask you to come back for twelve CDs for a penny. It's like, all right, cool, I'll come back. And I did this with not only Columbia House but BMG too. And yes. so, dude, oh my god! And and I would do this regularly, and and then the the wall, which was a record store, had this blue sticker I, that you could put on your CDs, and they I would, still have. <laughs> Uh, a Kiss album with the wall blue sticker yeah, on the album. And you can take the CD, no matter how fucked up it was, and you can get a brand new fucking CD. And I used to take that sticker because you could put it on a case and you just swap out the cases. And then I worked there, and then I got all these stickers for nothing, and I gave so many friends, like, rolls of wall stickers. <laughs> dude, like, yeah, dude, Mrs. Knob definitely got a roll of yeah. wall sticker Because, like, dude, they were freely accessible to us, and it was, it yeah. was a thing, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't give a fuck. It was a, a shit show, you know? That, that store went out of business, and probably because of people like us. I mean, at the end <laughs> of the day, Whatever, you know? What the fuck? That was well, fucking in the 90s, man. We didn't give a shit, you know? It was- you know, I, I got to thinking about the industry last night, and the problem is there isn't one real one area to point a finger at because it all goes back to the generation that wasn't left behind, that is now in their 20s. That's the generation that was socially promoted, that was told everybody's a winner, that mommy and daddy bought everything they wanted. And then Napster gave them free music. And iTunes came along and said, you don't have to buy the whole album. Just buy the song that you want. And then Spotify came along and took advantage of the Small Webcasters Act and manipulated it to fit their I sing a Larry. And now you're preaching to the choir, bro. Now I'm like, hallelujah. And here we are, where bands are getting bitched out for expensive albums or tickets or t shirts when everybody's to blame because nobody saw the warning signs. Every, nobody saw the notes they left behind turning into a generation of give me $15 an hour to say, do you want fries with that? And then fuck up your order. Well, and then fuck up your order on top of it. Right. Uh, you know how many times I go uh, through the and drive through and they fuck up my order? Every fucking time. Every fucking time I go through the drive through they fuck up my worse. order. Every fucking time. It's not been one time and not not one chain. Nothing, man. Every fucking time they fuck up my order. They get it wrong. They do they ask me, Oh, how many sauces do you want? I want yeah, I want barbecue sauce. Go to open the bag, guess what? There's no fucking sauce in the bag. They didn't even probably give you chicken yeah. nuggets. You gotta check that shit. I gotta check my bag every fucking time because some dope motherfucker doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and wants me to pay him fifteen dollars for him to say, Yeah, I didn't give you barbecue sauce. 
Or, yeah, hold the fucking cheese. He holds the cheese. He puts it on top of the fucking bun because he's dumb. It's just, it's it's painful, dude. It's painful. Yeah, right. And then, you know, you've also got the bands Ooh, that geez. have uh, kind of given up, too. I mean, let's face it. There was a time when you went to a concert, the bands worried about the stage, the lighting, their interaction with each other on stage. Some of the bands don't do that anymore. Well, you know, I, I, and, you're right and, on the money. Go ahead. No, you're right on the money, man. And, and this is true even for the local bands. And this is something maybe you guys, as local bands, if you're listening to Indie 180, have been listening to Indie 180 for the last 101 episodes can take away is, is that like you need to move around man you need to show me that you give a fuck if you show me you give a fuck then i'm gonna give a fuck you know what i mean like i and some bands some bands are just so goddamn crushing like chaotic those guys don't have to move an inch because that shit is just fucking crushing and it's got i got a grin ear to ear every time i see them and some dude can attest last time we saw them together dude i just have this grin on my face ear to ear <laughs> Just like this shit is so awesome right now. Like this is insane, and they're not moving around a whole lot, but they're fucking just crushing. Like Jason, he's you know got this amazing stage presence. He lights up the room, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And then for you know continuum, they got Brenda and Joby up there playing, and yeah, and then Brian just they, laying down hate. <laughs> Uh, dude, Odd Zero, dude, Mike beating the shit out of the stage. Holy fuck, man! Oh my god, and, yeah. Oh. Uh, and I, you know, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. I'm preaching to the choir there, man. That's a band that's like truly underrated. Those guys should have definitely been bigger than they were because they were fucking such a great. Like some of those licks that Mike Fuji threw down were just like fuck, incredible, man. Holy crap! Mm. Uh, you know, and, and there's uh, another aspect. That you know, I, I get what Jason saying earlier from Michaelia about there is no live culture show even portrayed in in movies and TV. But you know, I've been out at local shows and major band shows. I mean, last summer, Lacuna Coil played St. Vitus here in, in New York. And Vitus is like a, a 300 person venue. And a month later, the Kunikoya was playing Gramercy Theater, which is like double or triple what St. Vitus is. And there's also this elitist mentality of it's not worth my dollar to go. You know, St. Vitus, Lacuna Coil was maybe $30 a ticket at most. They played a full set in a very intimate setting. And people from the so-called music scene found reasons not to go. And then you've got the other end of it where Metallica announced the tour. It's a hundred and twenty five dollars a ticket. And the same people that bitched I can't afford St. Vitus for thirty dollars on a weeknight were chomping at the bit for a ticket for Metallica at National Coliseum or MetLife Stadium both of which, in the long run, will be way more expensive because you still got to get to the venue. So we're kind of in a who do you blame when everyone is at fault? Well, and you know, and the thing that, that drives me nuts, uh, being the Metallica mark that I am, is that like Lars being the figurehead of, of that whole movement and the Napster thing, what he said was absolutely 110% accurate as to what, what happened. He said, if you allow this to go on, 
artists are not going to get paid for their music and it's going to be a clusterfuck. I mean, that wasn't his exact words. That's a paraphrasing. But he was absolutely 110% right. And, and the thing is, what pisses me off the most is he was only the figurehead of many, 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 many artists that all believed that this was going to be the demise of the industry. And if you'll notice, the last Metallica record, the brand new one, Hardwired of the Self-Destruct, is on black and records. It's not on a fucking record label. Metallica has their own record label. They're big enough to do that. And smart enough at this point, I mean, in this part of their career, if you're going to give a record label any percentage, like Jason was talking about earlier, you're out of your mind if you're that big, if you're Metallica. There's no need. Still my favorite band ever, and I don't give a shit what anybody says. Dude, I wish I had the money to go see them, but I don't. And... uh I wanted to bring my son, but he, you know I just don't have that kind of cash, man. It's really expensive to go see that shit, and uh, I guess I'll, it won't be my thirteenth time. Maybe next time. Well, that's the other. And that's the other thing people are forgetting is the industry kind of went full circle. You look back to the seventies, even the sixties. It was all about the live show. The live show was where bands made their money and got the word out about the album so they would break even with the label on the record deal and maybe see a profit. Then in the 80s and 90s, it, it flipped. It became all about the album sales and the, the show was no big deal. And then Napster happened. And we are where we are now. Album sales plummeted. So the instinct was go back to concentrating on live shows. But they didn't take into account the value of the American dollar and all the labor laws that oh, came into effect since the 60s and 70s. And now, ticket prices are unbelievably high because of the value of the American dollar being so minute compared to everywhere else. So, while, uh, while you were speaking, and, and I'm not trying to be rude but uh we've had some guests join us and uh a little late but on rockstar time it's fine <laughs> i understand i've got uh scotty anarchy and mrs anarchy actually as well um here in the studio hanging out from crossing rubicon hi guys hello hi and ladies i don't mean to be uh triggered yeah please you forgot to refer to me as lady that's right. <laughs> you do wear more makeup. We are hot chicks. <laughs> yeah, we are. Really, we're you like guys scissor. Hottest lesbian scissor sisters ever. Scissor sisters. High five. High five. Hi, Scott. It. How you doing? Hello. The always Hello. controversial Scotty Anarchy. Are we really guests here? I feel like we're part of the family. We're well, always part of the family, Scott. You know that. <laughs> yeah. A couple weeks we're doing the, the Jeopardy. I'll give you the uh, answers before you leave. Awesome. I don't need the answers to kick those guys. Uh, that's answers. true. Star Wars this time around. Yeah, I mean, God, that's my strong point. On the 7th of May, you're going to hear that, the League of Extraordinary Frontmen. Uh, of course, Scotty Anarchy, the frontman of fucking Crossing Rubicon, I was saying earlier, and I've been I've been blowing smoke up your ass all night. Um, I'm saying, why, why aren't you guys played on more, you know, like radio stations and stuff? And, and you know, you guys are not alone. Uh, uh, Paragon Theorem, I think, is right in that category. Vision okay. Within, there's okay. no question. Dude, those guys... <laughs> Awesome fucking live, yeah. dude. Holy <laughs> shit. I uh, just love... Every time I see them, I just think to myself, why is this band not... And you guys are you guys are in that category. Why is this band not being played? It's always money. Yeah, I know. I mean, and that's what we talked about with Jason from I Kill You earlier. Yeah. We had a great conversation with him. I mean, radio Wendy is usually looking at about $50,000 for three months of spinning on the regular terrestrial radio stations. That's to do well. You know? And it's all like... Like, you know, like, actually something that, you know, Jeannie had pointed out to me, too, and it's just blatant common sense, but you look at a lot of the, uh, even stuff like the, uh, the, the XM and Sirius stuff. Yeah. If you ever look at, like, who are the top ten bands, they're always in the same five record labels. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, look, I mean, we said it earlier, you know, and I put it point blank. There's actually only three major corporate labels. Universal, Sony, yes. and Warner. That's it. Now, growing up, and I said this earlier, growing up, man, there was all kinds. There was Atlantic. I was really good friends with those guys at Atlantic Records, man. I, I met a lot of great bands that way. Just being in college radio and shit, I, I you know, I was fortunate enough to be the music director, and, and I knew the dude from Atlantic because I knew his brother from working in the record store. Like it just happened to be that I knew his brother really well. We were friends, so he would he took me under his wing. And, uh, Come on, I'm going to show you all these guys, dude. There were so many Interscope and fucking. Mm-hmm. And Atlantic and this and that and like dude we went to so many fucking parties and crazy things and it's like dude there's only three now that's crazy to me that mine I mean mine is of course there's tons of independence out there yeah I kind of like it better with the independent thing I mean there's no money in it ever which is kind of the downfall and as far as the industry goes everything you want you gotta pay for it yep. and you gotta base that like c- case in point and this is a shameless plug moment we're releasing a new single New single, uh, this, new single, Crossing the Rubicon. Check it out. This week or next week, we're going to be releasing. It's going to be coming out, and it was like how it's it's a lyric video. It's a great lyric video done by KJ Freer and uh, Amplified uh, Productions. Um, but um, good job, a, boys. It, you know, it being a, a lyric video, we didn't want to go full fuck you publicity, Revolver magazine, and all this other uh, shit. We kind of went smaller scale, smaller publications because the difference was: do you want to spend eight hundred and fifty dollars? Or four hundred and fifty dollars. Quick, quick note of reference, Turbo. Just so you know, um, Crossing Rubicon, worst band ever on Metal Sucks. Yes. So. And we didn't actually have to pay for them. <laughs> that was good. That was, which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. We were actually playing. Uh, we played. Uh, uh, we played Western Mass last week, and I always get terrified because. You know, that's I. Anytime I've ever gotten a death threat, it's always been from Western Mass. You better never show your face in Western Mass. <laughs> And, well, I guess we can't go to my parents' house. Yeah, and every time, but every time I've ever had one of those, like, I'll put a bullet through your head, you know, messages on my YouTube page or whatever. It's always like the weekend after we played to two hundred people up in Western Mass. It's like we were just up there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, we had it a good was time. great. There were four, five different kinds of bands, five different kind of songs. It was an awesome show. The crowd was really into it. I don't get it. But side note. <laughs> But yeah, so it's you know like yeah, thank you for Metal Socks because that was great publicity, and we didn't have to pay for that one. Uh, Scotty, I would like to introduce you to my good dear friend, and I've known him a very long time. Uh, Turbo from Bull Spike Radio, co-owner, along with his brother uh, Turbo, Scotty Anarchy of Crossing Rubicon. Hi, Turbo. How are you, Scotty? Oh, good, very good. Uh, Bob has told me a lot about you. Uh, it's all lies. Whatever he says, it's all fucking lies. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. It's actually probably pretty true. No, you're fighting like, a good you know, fight down there. Yeah, fucking anyway, right, man. Uh, Bull Spike Radio out of New York. Of course, check those guys out at BullSpikeRadio.com. You can check out Turbo's website at TurboRules.com. Make sure you send hate mail to his webmaster because that guy deserves it. And dick pics. And dick pics, definitely. <laughs> Now, Scotty, you know, you bring up uh, a point about the cost uh, of PR. And for those listening, I want to give uh, a little insight, too, from a recent conversation I had uh, with, with Dan Jameson and uh, even with, with Bumblefoot. Now, I say Bumblefoot, everyone listening knows Bumblefoot from Guns N' Roses. And if I say Scott Stock, you know Creed. If I say Jaron Moyer, you know Disturbed. Okay? And yet, the three of them are part of a band. And they just played the Stone Pony. The room should have been out the fucking door with a line. They've got the money, or so people think, for PR. And yet, it isn't there even for the big names when you do a side project. They start over as an indie band. So now you got to wonder now, is the PR game even worse anymore when 
the big guns can't get the PR that even a local can get. I think a lot of times when we're talking about as far as like, especially when it comes to shows, there's a lot of things that are, there's a lot of, I hate to go Big Lebowski on this, but there's lots of ins and outs and what have yous. A lot of times <laughs> you look at a show, you know, you can see a band that packs up a 1200 seat venue on a Friday or Saturday on a Wednesday, 200 people show up. Um, a lot of times too, um, how much of it is PR and how much, I mean, from press and how much is PR from radio stations? Because rock venues in Connecticut are drying up left and right because we lost terrestrial radio, even though nobody really listens to a lot of terrestrial radio anymore. <laughs> no. And, uh, nobody. You know, so like, you know, and also too, how many times you look at a national touring act yeah. that plays in one area and they draw 1,200 people. And then in another area, they draw 200 people. Yeah. And how many of those tickets are coming from local bands, yeah. too? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and look, here in Connecticut, we see that a lot. Or we were seeing that a lot, especially at a specific venue I won't mention. But they were piggybacking off the local bands so hard. It was like, holy shit. And then finally, the local bands were like, what are we doing? Like, this is dumb. Like, what? <laughs> Why are we doing this? This is fucking stupid. We were giving a lot of money to these guys for, like, what? So we can play the undergrounds? Oh, oh wait, sorry. Fuck, I said it. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you, you, we all knew what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's well, a- we have... It's not the interrupt, sorry. But we have the same thing here in, in the New York area. I mean, essentially, FM, in my eyes, whether it's New York, Connecticut, L.A., Chicago, FM is almost a dead... Medium. It's on its last leg. Oh, no question. As far as a medium. And Even the, outside of 1043, here in the New York area, there is no rock station. Well, and as a result, you know, I, I brought up the Jason earlier in regards to national bands coming through. I've seen more national bands come in and skip New York, even if there's a venue that they can play and they can fill, regardless of what time of the week it is, simply because they're not being heard. You know, there's another thing too, like this is no knock, because actually there's a lot of really, really awesome clubs in New York and a lot of really, really cool promoters in New York. Um, One of the things that was kind of weird about, there was... I hate, you know, people always talk about drama in local scenes. Mm. Oh, it's there. It's so Flash bad in New York. Rank. I mean, like, I, Connecticut's amazing. Connecticut's always been amazing. Yeah, uh, we were just, we've, been, we've been talking about that all night, how really fortunate we are to, to be here in Connecticut. And only in the sense that the music is just unfucking believable. And, um, and usually, like, the band support, like, it's so weird because it's where my band sounds. You know, I've had plenty of hardcore bands that have always had my back, you know, like in Connecticut. And, like, we're, like, you know, people have been in there's, like, other bands, like, oh, you guys are, you, you barely even metal. Whatever. That title's whatever. But, oh, like, we'd have, like, hardcore bands, like, oh, I fucking love you guys. And we're, like, really? That, well, thank you. <laughs> Golly, I love your work. But, like, you go to New York, and there are some areas where if your crowd shows up, and I won't mention any, anybody, any areas in particular, and I know this for a fact, and your crowd stays to watch the other bands on the bill, it's considered disrespectful to the band that they came to support. True Dude, story. I, I, I cannot tell stupid. you. Yeah. And, and Bob is being to show us here in the area when the trash floor was open, and it would baffle the hell out of me to see a band go on and the room be packed and the remaining bands on the bill are amazing bands that you want people to know, which is why you put them on the bill. And when this one band finishes, the entire venue empties out. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's really disrespectful. I feel from a yeah. band, from a band's point of view, even like just as a as a you know, of course I'm a, a we've we've established I'm not a 
average user of music. I'm a fucking high consumer addict. Addict. Fucking addict, yeah. I need my music, man. I just listen to Nickelback. I'm, so, I'm sorry. All day long. Gonna vomit. Nothing but vomit. Not here on Alphanar, you're not. <laughs> it's actually been banned. It's actually oh, music that's been banned on Alphanar. That's crazy, uh, right? Mm. I've actually seen them live. They rocked. Actually, they are good. But one. the fans said no more Nickelback and no, <laughs> and no more Stained, so I can't play either one of those. I'm okay with that Stained. Yeah. So. I was say, actually, it was kind of cool. Though. One of the things I heard about the guys from Nickelback was they had, when they when they first blew up, they, were, they didn't realize in their contract there was this huge fuck you bonus that they were getting because of all oh, the record shit. sales they had. And Chad Kroger literally was like, well, take that money back and invest it in signing new metal bands. Yeah. Which actually turned out to be 605 Records, which yeah. is a... Uh, imprint label that he started from Roadrunner Records on his own. One of the things, uh, Scott, that I wanted to talk to you about, actually, that I wanted to have you here for is um, a few... Drama? Maybe it was like uh, last year. Probably it was last year. You had your first uh, Anarchy promotion show. Yes. And outside, we were talking about bands that fake it. <laughs> and like fake it? some of the stories you had were really mm-hmm. quite interesting and I, you know, I think that correlates to this industry topic in the sense that, like, for me, going to see local shows for five bucks, I get to see five or ten sometimes, or fifteen or a thousand, sometimes too many for you know very short money. And and I always pay, by the way, uh, and you should too. You shouldn't ask to be on the guest list, but that's a different yeah. story for a different time. Um, I just. I guess my question was what I don't know. Well, I can tell you this: when it comes, we were, oh yes, oh, we were talking about the uh, the bands that fake it. Yes, let's yeah. talk about that. I will never drop a name of a band that I know fakes it or I've seen faking it. But one thing I will say is this: um, what happens with the big three record labels trickles down through the independent labels. And here's the thing: it's all about money. Nobody's buying records anymore. So if you have a shitty record, it could do a lot of damage. I mean, usually the investment. We're on our level. We could probably do a record for. Ten, twelve thousand dollars. These people are putting in fifty, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollar investment. Yeah. Then you got to look at radio publicity, which yeah. is another fifty thousand yeah. dollars. You look at uh, yes, they make their money all pretty much mostly from touring. Whatever sales they get, great, you know. But does that even cover? Yeah, not you know, even getting tour support from the label. Not. I think they said like five percent of all bands can actually cover their tour support. Ugh, that's crazy. So what happens is they, um, you know, like. It's almost like getting so. It's far, I hate to say this because people think, "Oh, in metal, we're not cookie cutter." There's a lot of cookie cutter in metal. Of course, you know, in pop, there is. It's it's which is so awesome about working with underground and working with independent bands and working with the uh, local bands across the countries and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing: if I have a bad show, it could ruin me. So I'm going to lip sync and play the backing tracks. And it's like, why don't you just fucking learn how to sing? You know, why don't you just, why don't you just have a band that actually plays with your drummer tight enough so you're not gonna make yourself look like an ass? So the talking logical sense. thing to do. The irony was that there this one uh, which, Roots. yeah, like that. Like I go to see like you, you go to see like you go to see like a show like at a major uh, venue where you have this big name headliner, and you have four bands that sold probably more tickets than this big headliner actually brought in in the first place, and. These bands are putting their hearts into it. You got this headline that's up there pantomiming to a fucking radio. Yeah, right. You know, so like, like with like that's you know there and there's not not all bands actually one of the like there are bands that blatantly will not do it. Um, it's funny because you know metal bands, some metal bands that do it, but you have like what's her name, um, um, Lady Gaga calls bands out for doing it. Oh, I do, Lady Gaga. You know, she gets a lot of flack, but dude, that chick is really super talented. She's man. awesome. Amazing. Her early, her early college videos of her when she wrote like original piano pieces. The only thing I compare it to is like early Freddie Mercury. Yeah, and we're talking like, dude, and she's got God. like serious <laughs> chops. Like it's it's quite ridiculous. Like she was on Stern and and she was doing a uh, Zep like just off the top of her head. And I'm like, holy fuck, she's doing like like straight up just dropping it like it's fucking some serious shit. Like holy fuck, man. I, I have to say because this it's kind of funny this happened today. Um, I'm not going to mention any names. Okay. But there was a band that missed it. Like, I, we even made a post about people lip syncing on stage. Where yeah. I said, if, you're, if, you're lip-sync, <laughs> if you lip sync on stage, <laughs> you're a singer. I know where not, we're going. You're not really, I'm not mentioning any names. I know. You're not really a singer. You're merely a puppet. Yeah. And somebody took it the wrong way and they made a big 
to do about it. Big to do. It was anyway, a big to do. After like all this drama, drama. I guess there was enough shit that came out. So now that this person is not lip syncing on stage anymore. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it sounds like a pig being raped. It's awesome. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most god awful thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Pig raping. Pig raping. Yeah. Fan fucking test. Hmm. You take away all no, the tracks and the backing vocals and all the amazing you're, shit. You're bringing- Go ahead, you bring up the drama aspect, and unfortunately, we live in a day and age where everything is up for grabs because 90% of the people uh, that are on social media don't know how to properly use it, and drama goes up, and you don't realize it's after the fact. And that drama gets out into the scene and I think here in the New York area it's part of what hurts the scene because you know promoters talk shit about each other or you have a scenario like uh, I'm kind of at the beginning of where the New York area just doesn't support musically the way that it used to. And I moved on with Rocket into Dystrophy to New Jersey, and it's gotten huge there. And there's someone I won't mention by name because I, I consider him family, but on a business level, um, I know he stabbed me in the back if he got the chance. And this individual is now doesn't really have venues to work with here in the city. And now he's coming in to what I've done with people in Jersey with another event that was recently announced. And now it's an issue of you're intermingling and where is loyalty or respect in you know, working together for the music instead of working against each other just so you could say, I did it bigger with better names. You know, I think at the end of I think at the end of, at, at the end of the day, you know, because we're coming close to the end of the show here. I think for the you know we talk about the past, we talked about the present. I think for the future, that really is the bottom line. I mean, more. More camaraderie means more for everyone mm-hmm. when it comes to local and independent. And yes, you know, every band wants to shine and and go and do their thing because, I mean, that's how you make money. But at the end of the day, if you're not helping each other, man, you're just fucking up everything. You know what I mean? And you can't be phony about that shit because you're going to be called out on it every fucking time. Every single fucking time you're going to be called out on your bullshit. So support or don't, but like you should support because these bands are fucking awesome. You know, there's so many, and we've talked about it all night, and I'm not going to stop talking about it. That's what I do. It, it, there's so many great fucking music bands here in Connecticut, and across the fucking country, and across the fucking globe that I've come across in my last eleven years. That fuck, man, way better than anything I fucking heard on FM radio ever. Except that band. Uh What's it called? She walks without legs. Yes, because no one else is in here. <laughs> they're they're awful, man. I don't. Know. I'm gonna plunge the clunge. <laughs> plunge that clunge. I didn't hit it all night. I didn't hit it all night. I, I had. Mm-hmm. To... Well, I always say like, I mean, it's you know, like to me, I would rather. I mean, if you want to go on a big tour, it's gonna happen one of two ways. Either you're gonna buy onto it, money, or, or which is money, or your band better draw. 200 people in every one of the venues that that tour is going to. Those are the two ways you're going to be valuable. Or a situation where you have a draw that might be different. Case in point, um, you get, uh, oh, what was the band? Of uh, Mice and Men was on tour with uh, Lincoln Park. And we're like, it was like, why did, why would this tour work out? This doesn't make any sense. Of uh, Mice and Men has got a huge young following and people kind of forgot about who Lincoln Park was. Yeah. So Lincoln Park, who's one of the biggest rock bands in the world that's going to be playing 10,000 seat arenas, is like, shit, we put this band on this tour with us, we're going to attract a lot of young people to Lincoln Park. That's the idea. 
Um, We're gonna attract one to two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, easily. Unfortunately, their new stuff sucks. Which band? Well, Lincoln Park. Also, just, the new stuff is horrible. Songs, so I don't really know. Their aside earlier from, stuff is amazing. Yeah. Aside from the new stuff from Lincoln Park sucking though, you've now got a case, and I've seen it. It doesn't matter what people are paying for a ticket. They're only going into the major venues now for the bands they want to see. Yeah. I've seen PNC Bank Art Center fill up for the middle act and then empty out for the headliner because that's what people wanted to see. Yeah. So are you really gaining an audience you're right you're totally right man you're you're I mean, absolutely 100 percent right and and unfortunately we've run out of time we've uh, got like two minutes left to go scott you've got the final word well uh being i actually had a, a nice little intro here for you here uh, check this out I, I said uh front man of crossing rubicon true winner of nerd jeopardy true and the kingpin of the league of extraordinary frontmen also true I always said I'm the frontman of the frontman. Yeah, I, I would say that's <laughs> true. And uh, come a couple weeks from now, the the winner of Star Wars Jeopardy as well. Uh, it's really only a matter of time. I even think actually having the contest is almost a waste of my yeah, time. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like it shouldn't even be. <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you saying in advance he's going to win the Jeopardy? Well, I'm not saying that he is. Wink, wink, nod, nod. But he is. Shenanigans. <laughs> Actually, I haven't even wrote the questions yet, so uh, Scott can't get the answers because I don't have the questions yet. That's the only reason I came here. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, look, if you've missed any portion of this show, maybe you want to catch it again, check out Bull Spike Radio. Turbo, I will get this over to you in time. I promise. You're better. This is, this is a really great show. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me all night. And uh, My pleasure. Look, we got to... We definitely got to do this again because we've really only scratched the surface. No question. Of, of what's going on. And let's face it, unless people do that one word and support, whether it's buying an album, buying a ticket to a show, and staying for the whole show, going in for the openers, staying for the whole show, and seeing every band, we're not going to turn around from this downward spiral. No doubt. And and my, my motto is, come early, giggity, stay late. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that, and that, that really has been my motto for every show that I've ever been to locally. I try to get there. As soon as I know doors are going to open or like somebody's going to be there, I want to be there not only to help, but to set up whatever and to enjoy the show the whole fucking time that I'm there. And sometimes, you know, you get sidetracked with friends, whatever. That's cool. But like, make sure you check out the bands, too. You know, a lot of these bands are traveling fucking far places to just play for your ass. And they would appreciate it if you just stuck around and like listen to what the fuck they got to say, you know? So... That's it, man. We're out of time. We're out of fucking 180 minutes right now. Boom. Turbo, thank you so much, brother. It's always a pleasure. Always, dude. Anytime you know that. Kick your webmaster's ass for me, would you? Yeah, as soon as I get my hands around this nut, I will. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, look, we're going to leave tonight with uh, something special. I got a live set from I Kill Ya, right? Nice. But it's special because it's live from the Knitting Factory at Steve's fucking memorial show. Oh. Yeah, buddy. Oh, man. Yeah, no doubt, right? That's something serious to throw down. This is from Live from the Knitting Factory from Evil Steve's fucking anniversary show from fucking uh, f- quite a while ago now, many years. And uh, I got to play it because, you know, we all love Evil Steve. And we all love I Kill Ya. And uh, what better way to end the night than with this? Terrible thanks again. want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you missed any portion of the show, check it out on Bull Spike Radio from 6 to nine on Sunday tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow you can check out Turbo. He'll be right back here with you, and he's got Don Jameson on the fucking phone. You lucky bastard, you! Always hanging out with the big wigs, man. I try, I try. <laughs> check out Turbo's show, The Asylum, right here on O F N R Wednesdays from one to four every Wednesday, and of course uh, Thursday night you can check out Johnny Demon 
from New Jersey, Johnny Demon Show, only here on Off and R. You can check it out exclusively right here on Off and R at 8 p.m. on Thursday nights. Friday through Sunday, all independent weekend, all weekend long. Maybe all independent permanently. More to be discussed mm. in the coming weeks. Keep it locked to Off and R. Fish Laughing Radio, 24 7 and 128 kilobits per second, which is actually better than Sirius Satellite Radio. They only broadcast at 64 kilobits per second. Just letting you know. Just saying. And uh, also, uh, yeah.